Hi, everybody. How are you? Hi, 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 hi. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Susan. Hi, Jillian. Hi, Pam. How are you? I'm sorry, guys. I'm running a little bit late. <clears throat> so I hope you guys are doing good. I hope everyone is doing well, well, well. I hope you guys are good. I have to tell you, I am not, I have not been well, you guys. I have not been good at all. I have been fighting whatever this is. And hi, Scotty. And Pat sent us a message via Brenda that says, um, please, attention Shelly message from our friend Pat. Please tell her that I can't read the chat, but I can hear everything. Oh, that's right. I, I figured that. That's why I would say hi. Hi, Scotty. Oh, I'm so happy to see you. You're watching the basketball game. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Well, I'm happy to see you guys. I'm sorry. I went, I know, right, Joyce? Hi, Joyce. Well, I went and I had acupuncture for those of you that want to catch up on my ridiculousness. And it is exactly that. Okay. Without a hesitation, it's ridiculous. I don't know what I did to my shoulder, but I hurt it. And it has been really bothering me. And then finally I realized I had to break down and go and do something about it because I was going to have to take a trip. <clears throat> you know, I'm leaving to go to the East Coast for a couple of days. And so... I had to deal with it, and so I've been having acupuncture, but can I tell you, my shoulder is, I don't know what I did to it. So everybody's saying, hi, Pat. Hi, Anne. So I figure what we'll work on a little bit today is we'll talk a little bit about our secret Santa swap, because a lot of people... You guys can't hear me? I'm here. I am here. Tell Scotty to refresh. I am here. I am here. I'm chatting. Can everyone hear me or not hear me? You hear me? Well, tell Scotty she needs to refresh. Hi, Catherine. Oh, good. Because all of a sudden I see Scotty say something. So, <clears throat> so I went, I'm having acupuncture for my, my, I think I have a torn rotator cuff. And that is, I don't know if any of you have ever had one. It is really, really painful. It's horrible. You can hear me? Oh, good, Jillian can hear you. You can't see? You can just hear Jillian? Well, maybe one of the girls can walk you through how to um, how to be able to see, too. So anyway, we've been working on a secret sister swap. And in our secret sister swap, let me see if I still have some of the stuff. I don't have all the stuff here. But in our secret sister swap, this is what we started making. We started, you have to include like five painty papers. You include five handmade envelopes. And they can be different kinds. They don't have to be just like the ones I've made. You include five book pages, five of your choice, five napkins, five pieces of ephemera, and... <clears throat> And there's a couple of other things. Do you guys remind me what the other things are? Because my head can't think right now. I wrote it all down on one of these pieces of paper. Okay, here we go. Here it is. It's right here. Five handmade envelopes, five painty papers, five embellishments, five library pockets, one handmade Carter tag with like a pen pal note on it so that it says, Hi, Carrie. Hi, Anne. Hi, Brenda again. Hi, Jane. Um, so then, then the handmade card or tag needs to have like a pen pal note on it. Like it's mine would say, hi, I'm Shelly. I live in Hawaii. You know, some of my favorite things are painty papers or whatever, stuff like that. Okay. And then you just talk a little bit about yourself, how long you've been crafting and creating. I don't know anything that you would show with, share with a pen, pen pal. Five napkins and five book pages. Now, that's the handmade stuff, right? Then you want to send some extras. The extras are bits and pieces of fabric, some playing cards, buttons, map pages, 
uh, scrap trim, magazine pages, postcards, anything that you would love to share because we're going to send it. Remember, if you're not, if you're international, you're going to send a different kind of style envelope. But remember that those are that are U.S. are sending it in a flat rate envelope. So you want to fill it. You want to fill it so that it feels like you're getting a gift. Hi, Amberly. Hi, Chris. So I figure we'll work on a little bit on that today. The napkins aren't handmade. The napkins are so that you can use them in handmade decoupage stuff. The napkins are just anything decorative napkins. Now, if you don't have de decor decorative napkins, you could certainly stamp on a bunch of napkins and make them handmade. You know, the thing, the idea is to send somebody something that's going to make them feel special, right? The difference is most of the swaps that you enter into, everything is a bought thing. Here, really, the only bought things are the, the napkins, and hopefully you have a stash of them. Hi, Lucinda. And then everything else comes from recycled bits, like your book pages or books that you've gotten at a junk store, a thrift store free from the library. Hi Cassandra. Okay, so really that's that's what it is. They don't, and if you have, I'm going to go through my stash and I know that I have scrapbook paper and I have um, just all kinds of stuff. I'm going to make tabs and different things for my my person. Oh uh, Lucinda, that's an awesome idea. Lucinda said her son recently moved to Las Vegas, and she told him to get her a napkin for where, from wherever he goes. So that's a great idea. So the idea is that you're gonna put the you're gonna use them in making your own junk journal. That's what it is. So I thought today what we would work on is we'd work on some more components. And last week we were working on painted papers and stuff. See, like in mine, I'm gonna send some of my tags like this, but I'm also gonna make some tag. I'm gonna go through them and paint some. These I just like because they're kind of cool. Like this one says cook and partially dried, right? And then this is like a Pop-Tarts box. It's super cute. And then, and then, you know, it's just like nothing really. But, and then we're going to make a cover. So we're not going to do the cover today. Because you guys, I just, I can't, I'm telling you, I'm in so much pain. It's ridiculous. And I cannot take pain pills. I can't take any, any kind of meds. So I figured we might finish working on some painting papers that we worked on. Somebody asked me what a Funkin' Wagnall was. I wanted to show you. Then I think we're going to make some of my paperclip embellishments. I think we're going to do that. I found my Rambo knife. This is my Rambo knife. For those of you that are wondering, this is my Rambo knife. They still make Pop-Tarts, Lisa. They still make Pop-Tarts. Isn't that crazy? That's awesome, Lucinda said she went out on a tour and she got some stuff to include. I think that's great. <coughs> Hi, Linda. <clears throat> they are still making Pop-Tarts. I have an 11-year-old. She loves them. Loves, loves, loves them. They have more flavors, I think. You know what? I honestly don't know. Because I'm not a good judge of Pop-Tarting. I'm not. I just buy her what she likes. So anyway... I thought maybe I'm going to add some embellishments on some of the painting papers I made. Maybe make a few more. Show you guys some Funkin' Wagnalls. Then I think I'm going to make some ham. Maybe I'll make some eyeball embellishments. Or You can make your embellishments any way you want. They don't have to be eyeballs just because mine are. Okay? But anyway, tell me about you guys. I want to hear all about you. I want to hear what's going on with you guys. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Yes, brown sugar and cinnamon are her favorite. This is my, they, somebody called it in one of the streams. I do have other mat knives that are smaller and thinner, but somebody said, oh, that's a Rambo knife, and then it went out. You know how things get out of hand on these streams, girls, you know. You guys are so funny. Susan wants to know about your typo, Scotty. Um, everybody say hi to Pat. Pat cannot read the chat, but she's just listening. Cassandra says her step-grandson is as tiny as real and he loves Pop-Tarts. Hey, that's great. Hey, Margie, how are you? Well, when you have an 11-year-old, you buy Pop-Tarts, okay? 
You just buy Pop-Tarts. You just go. You just do it. You don't even think about it. You go and you buy Pop-Tarts. <coughs> because everybody knows an 11-year-old must have Pop-Tarts. If any of you guys have young kids in your house, you know exactly what I mean. Exactly what I mean. Like, look, this is a cool Japanese book, and I'm cutting pages out of it to put in my, in my stuff. And look, this is somebody's lesson. This is already falling apart before somebody has, like, some attack on me. Like, it's, it was already falling apart. Look, it has, like, somebody's lessons in here. So I'm going to send some pages of this, too. Okay, everybody, Cassandra's saying hi, Pat, and Lucinda's saying hi, Pat, and Jillian's sending her love, too. And Catherine just says, for packing, material, and teaching, journaling, class tomorrow. Awesome, Catherine. Um, Liz says, hi, Pat. Amberly says, hi, Pat. And Mildred says, Mildred says, in all caps, hi, Shelly, excuse me, but I love Pop-Tarts. Yes, Mildred, I agree. Pop-Tarts are awesome. So... Scotty said when her son was in high school, he would eat a, pop, a box of Pop-Tarts for breakfast. Well, imagine how many cool things you could have made from that, Scotty, if you, were, if you were collecting that sort of thing back then. Okay. So, and if you guys live in a cool area, send some maps of where you live. Like, here, I'll show you. Let me see if I can grab them. Because my shoulder is so messed up. I feel like, you know how you always hear, like, somebody, so-and-so is out for the season. Girls. My arm hurts so bad. I think I'm out for the season. It is so bad. Thanks, Jane. Samantha saying, hey, Pat. And hi, Deb. Mildred says, hi, Pat. Hey, Pat. Hurry back soon. Okay, guys, I had a box of eyeballs here last week. I don't know what I did with my box of eyeballs. I'll have to scour for some more eyeballs. When we when we get down to it, I will scour for more eyeballs. Oh, here's my box of eyeballs. Oh, good. Yay, I have my box of eyeballs. You guys, I've had, I'm telling you, my shoulder's killing me, and I'm like a little haphazard today. You know, the funny thing is when you go to acupuncture, acupuncture itself doesn't hurt. If anybody's afraid of it, it doesn't hurt. The thing that, for me, that hurts now is the pain release. It's like if you hold, if you don't take a lot of stuff, take a lot of medicine. You broke, broke your shoulder three years ago, Lucinda. Oh, my God. I don't even know. And I have to fly a very long flight. To fly from here to, um, to fly from here to Boston is very long. Like, I leave in the afternoon on... Monday and I don't get there till Tuesday morning it's like long it's I don't know like 15 18 hours I don't know and that's why I went because I figured you know I, I needed to but the pain release today it's really Jillian I can't cancel my trip honey if I could cancel my trip I would have and so she's had five shoulder surgeries and her still hurts oh no well I'm just gonna cut some pages out I'm sorry guys I'm just telling you why I'm like so after I, I had my treatment today, and I came home and I laid down, and I barely woke up in time for our stream. I woke up because Hadi was like, aren't you streaming soon? And I was like, oh, my gosh. And I don't nap, you guys. I'm not a napper. No, there's some people that are nappers, but I was just in so much. I wasn't in pain in the place. Like, I was in sort of pain release. Does that make sense? Any of you guys ever had acupuncture? Well, this particular funk and wag mills and they're good these are dictionary i mean uh, encyclopedias you guys remember i told showed you some last time that had like onion skin style papers these are not onion skin style papers these are the ones that have like i like to use these as painty papers they're good texture you know me guys i like to paint on anything i i cannot lie i paint on everything i seriously have a painty paper addiction I'm not going to lie to anyone. I have a painty paper addiction. Who else in our group has a painty paper addiction? Speak up now. Hello, my name is Shelly. I have a painty paper addiction. I may actually use one of these 
journal covers for the cover of my thing. I was going to use a paper bag that I painted, but I might use something else. I don't know, you guys. You guys, right now, I'm in so much... Uh, I don't know how you girls that have chronic pain live with it. Because this one bites the dust. Scotty, have a much more... Um, I have a tremendous respect for you, my darling. The whole idea is to try not to cut the spine, but if you do, it's okay because you can repair it. Because most of the time, you're never leaving the cover as it is. And even if you cut the spine, you can you can put some you can glue. But you're gonna have to glue some sort of binder reinforcement inside anyway. I usually got I'm knocking my paint off. I usually use like an old express mail or an old. An old express mail or a used express mail or a used um, FedEx envelope. I have a friend that works for a company here that ships out. They must get, I can't even tell you. She always calls me when she has a nice pile and I don't even take half of what she gets. I probably get like maybe one tenth of what she gets and I'll end up with like 50 used FedEx envelopes. So or um, priority mail, what, however people send her stuff. But the Tyvek is that, I don't have one in front of you, but I'll show you guys before we finish. So I want you guys to have fun doing this swap. I want you to make things that you would enjoy receiving. You know, the idea isn't to finish it in record time. It's not, a, it's not a race. The idea is to enjoy yourself, but I just wanted to show you how you can get most, the majority of the things that you're making done in a really short period of time because Sometimes, I don't know, have, have any of you guys entered swaps where the, so I still have to take this part out, but what I would do is I would take this out gingerly, put a piece of Tyvek inside of it, glue a piece down into it, and then maybe some, if I wanted to put some extra, some make it extra sturdy. The thing is, if you're going to go ahead and poke through here, like if you're going to sew your signatures into the spine of this old book, and you're going to do it where you see it, not a hidden spine where you glue the piece in, then you might want to consider double Tyvek and maybe a very thin piece of some sort of decorative paper or something to cover it, and then go ahead and poke your holes. But sometimes if I'm going to just do a twine binding or if I'm going to just poke a couple holes for Traveler's Notebook on, you know, and run some elastic, I may go ahead and put some duct tape. But duct tape is harder to sew through. Okay, and then you have your cover, and if you like your cover, keep it, and if you don't, faux finish it. You've seen, I've got, I've got a bunch of videos on there that show you how to faux finish. Paint on it, cover it with fabric, cover it with paper. I mean, you know, it's not particularly offensive, but it's not beautiful. It's still fun. So that's a Funkin' Wagnall, and then this is also a Funkin' Wagnall, but I'm, or no, this is Standard Reference Encyclopedia. This one, I have to say, is sort of like, a People Magazine style encyclopedia. I mean, you'll have like random people and random bits. This is the one that I had, that I used last week that had the exercise people in it. So you'll find some funky things. It's a great, a great one to make envelopes with. Like, look, this is from, this is Margaret Ham, Hamilton from uh, The Wizard of Oz. Like, like that's what's on the encyclopedia page. Isn't that cool? I'm missing the whole combo, you guys. I'm sorry. Hi, Christy. <coughs> anyway, I'm missing the whole combo. How's your move going, Amberly? Hi, Lori. So I figure let's do a few. Oh, the other thing I was going to show you is you guys, I was painting envelopes last week. Look, these are junk mail envelopes. Like, can you see the business reply? So that might be something that you, if you're, if you're getting into the painty papers, start painting some of these junk mail envelopes. And then, I mean, you can see the writing on them. I haven't finished them or anything. It's good to let them dry between coats. This one's a little shiny because the purple and the pink paint are gloss. That really cheap paint, but it's gloss. 
You know what, needles needles are not my favorite thing either, but the pain's worse than the needles, Amberly. So <coughs> that gives you some ideas of what you can put into your some of your secret Santa, secret sister, Santa swap. Okay, and I'm gonna paint, I may paint a couple pages because I'm gonna do a couple of extra. I've got a couple of pages here from something I don't know what. Must have been from that other one. I may paint a couple of these different colors. I'm gonna let them dry because I might want to use them in my embellishments. So I need some sort of painting papers for that. Oh, you finally get to craft last night. That's so awesome. Good for you, Amberly. So, you know, the thing is, is that most of the places now will give you, if you go to a thrift store, they'll actually give you, oh, look, there's Gandhi right there. I'm not going to paint on Gandhi. Most of the um, thrift stores will give you some, they'll give you some, They'll give you some encyclopedias. Like you can get, you can get some encyclopedias for free. They'll give them to you. Oh my gosh, you guys, these have too many things on them. I won't, I don't want to paint over. Maybe I didn't really look at the, the volume. I have them all in my garage, in my, in my current, my current craft room supply house out in the garage. See, look, some of this one has maps in it. I guess if I tear out some past this, there's some, there's some pages that I can, that I can paint on. And then we'll make some paper clip embellishments and I'm going to make mine out of magazine pieces, but I thought I might make some out of a few of these, a few painted, um, A few painted papers. So sometimes if they have images on it that I like, I'll save that for a um, save that for a envelope. Because you'll have plenty if you look through, you'll get plenty that have no images, or they'll have images of people that you don't know, or that you don't care about. You know. So anyway, that's what's going on in my world, friends. Friends. So Okay, I'm missing the whole conversation. How oh, is that like acupuncture, Jillian? You know what? Can I tell you? It's Amberly. The acupuncture needles are so tiny, you don't even feel them. The only thing that I feel is that because I've been holding all this pain in my body, because I've been holding, like, my body has been holding in all this pain, that the release of the pain has caused me to be exhausted and being, you know, it's like, I don't know. Maybe one of you girls can explain better than me. I'm going to put my Rambo knife up until I'm ready to do my embellishments. It's less deeper than acupuncture. It goes to trigger points of your muscles. Oh, that sounds good, Jillian. You, I needed something. Hey, Liz. Hi, Edna. Oh, Edna, please send your sister and your family in Puerto Rico our love. We love her. Your sister and we're sending her lots and lots and lots of well wishes. Hey Lisa. So anyway, I'm gonna get my little painty palette going on. And <coughs> but you guys, I want it to be fun. I want you guys to have fun doing the swap. I don't want it to be I don't want it to be stressful, but I also don't it's not like a you know, it's not it's not a race. It's to be. It's to enjoy it, but it's also you want to make something you're proud of. You want to make something that you want to receive. You know, so you want to make something that you'd be proud to receive. You don't want to. 
Because everybody's going to post what they receive in our group. I'm hoping they'll post the pictures. So, you know, that's the kind of cool thing is if they post the pictures of what they receive, then then you'll get to see what everybody else got too. That's like half the fun of it is seeing what everybody gets. At least that's what I think. You know, I like that sort of thing, you guys. I like that. I like it when people receive things that they love. And I like it when people give stuff they're proud of. You know, when you give something you're proud of or something you'd be excited to receive, it makes it all the better for everyone, right? It makes it all the better for everyone. it all the better. So I want you guys to tell me what's going on in your world. I told you about my ridiculousness. <coughs> mm. I like happy mail too. It's the mail that makes me happy. Even if I'm not getting it. Right? Yeah, the postman today came today because like, tomorrow's a holiday here for the post office and he brought, actually he brought something, a package. It wasn't actually for me. It was actually for my daughter. My daughter that's in college here. Anyway, he brought, he bought a, he brought a package for me and, or for her and he was like, what's up with you? You know, you're usually the, the package queen and you know, I don't know if you know this, but post people get paid by sometimes the number of mail that they deliver. Did you know that? There's like a percentage. I mean, they have a set salary, but they get bonuses based on their on their uh, deliveries. And so I guess because I haven't really been, you know, I get I still get a fair, I still get more mail than the average person. But you guys, I haven't been feeling so good, and I haven't really, usually I send out a lot of mail too, and he takes that. I haven't been doing anything. Between my ridiculous sinus infection and then this shoulder. The shoulder is worse than the sinus infection. I think the sinus infection sinus infection was like a it was like minor, so minor. Liz, you left the house? Oh my gosh, that's awesome. And you drove the car? Oh Liz, what great news. I'm so happy for you, Liz. Oh, that's awesome. I think that's fabulous. How many of you subscribe to our 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 sister our sister crafter our our crafting mama sister uh, Nana's place? How many of you guys sub subscribe to her channel? Did you guys anybody subscribe? Hi, Sandra. You had a veterans assembly at your school today. Oh, so Lisa subscribed, Samantha subscribed, Joyce did, Brenda did. Awesome. You subscribe, Susan? Well, she's having a challenge. Did you guys see the challenge? She's doing a five, she's doing a, a challenge giveaway. She's doing a 500 SEBI challenge. You're working on your signature. Was it a signature or just a page, Amberly? I thought it was just a page. I thought you had to make one journal page. Am I wrong? Is that a whole signature? I thought it was just one journal page. You saw her, you saw it this morning, Cassandra. It is awesome. You just to subscribe to Nana Ann. Oh, she's so, you guys, I love her. You know what I think? Like, I think that, I know she's from Australia, but I have to say, you know, I think her love for junk and my love for junk, I think we must be sisters. It's a, it's a full page, right? It's only supposed to be a page for her journal. So it's not a whole signature. Not that you can't send her one, but the requirements are one. I thought it was one four by six 
It had to fit into a four by six envelope. It could be, it could be the eight and a half by 11 folded in half to fit into the four by six, right? Or it could be just the four by six folded in half has to fit in a four by six envelope. And it can be a plain journal page or a decorated journal page. Well, I'll show you guys what I made. I made one today too, because because I'm leaving on Tuesday morning so early, I meant Monday so early that I won't be back until I don't know when. I get back later, I get back on the weekend. Unless unless I unless things end early and I can catch an earlier flight. Oh, uh, Edna says I have she has her she has her her has us on mute. But I'm watching, and since I'm on my phone, my sister said thank you so much for all of your prayers. Well, we sent her lots and lots and lots of prayers. And we tell her we send her our love to Pam. You know, I don't know how long I've been watching her channel. But I've been watching her channel long enough when she, I don't know how long. I guess I could go back and look and see when I subscribed. But one of my favorite videos, and if you guys go back and watch some of my old videos, I actually talk about her in one of them. So I'm sure that's kind of gives you some indication of when I started watching her channel. But I, um, you have the cred. Oh no, Carrie, feel better. Feel, feel better. Because Scotty says her son called in Arkansas set by 40 points. You good to watch now? Awesome. Um, Nana's requirements were like a four by six. It had to fit into a four by six envelope, just one journal page, and it could be decorated front and back, or it could just be um, decorated on one side and the other side left blank for journaling or whatever. And you, you can do it your style. And the reason she decided, which I think is really smart, she's much smarter than me. Uh, Julie, uh, Joni, hi Joni, first of all, J Nana is Tracy, Nana Tazzy, she's from um, Australia, she's got a really cool voice, she's one of our crafting mamas, she's doing a 500 subby giveaway, <coughs> and she's a woman, a, a crafter after my own heart, she makes lots of recycled things, and she's really cool, but she's doing a 500 subby giveaway, and to enter into the giveaway, because she didn't want people just to come and uh, subscribe to her channel and then enter the giveaway and then unsubscribe, which I'm sure there are people that do that all the time. Um, she wanted people that wanted that were going to do the challenge, I mean, do the be considered for the giveaway, do something. So she's making a journal. She's asking everybody to send one journal page, four by six, to fit into a four by six envelope. It could be four by six folded in half, or it could be, you know, the full, like a full size page folded in half to fit in the envelope. It can be decorated any way you like, I think. Am I wrong, you guys? Can it be decorated? Good night, Carrie. I hope you feel better. So funny. Joy says, go Razorbacks. So I will show you guys. I'm, I'll show you what I made. I made one today. I haven't finished it, but I made one today. And that was, that was the only crafting I got done today. And I'll confess, you guys, I made it out of something I've already made. So, I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal. All I did was put it together. I, I have not... Guys... I've been feeling great. I have not been feeling good. So that is just my MO. So for those of you that are just joining us, we're doing a, a secret Santa sister swap here in Crafting Mamas. And if you want to join, it's open to anyone. If you want to join, you have to go over to our Facebook group. And let, otherwise, you have to email me and let me know you want to be in on it. And then I'll send you your secret Santa and put you in the mix. Um, the partners will be given out. You have to sign up by November 20th, 2017. And you have to, you have to, you have to sign up by November 20th, 2017. And you have to, uh, 
um, mail out by December 15th. For those that live in the U.S., it's going to be sent in a 9 by 12 priority flat rate envelope. And you want to fill it full. I mean, you have some parameters and guidelines of, of a few things to add, but after that, it's whatever you have. And I know we all have a lot of extra stuff. I mean, I do. You just want to, you're just sharing your stash. And you want to send a package that you want to receive. Okay, that's the whole thing. You want to send a package you want to receive. Um, what thread do I suggest doing signatures? So if you're going to sew together a journal, I like to use wax linen thread, but you can use, I've used embroidery floss, I've used, um, I don't know, just any, a twine. I mean, basically it's what you can get through your needle, but, and how big your holes are. But use what works for you. You can get waxed, uh, I don't even have, I have a, I don't have a spool close by. Wax linen thread is something you can get at one of your crafting stores, Hobby Lobby or something like that, but you can also buy it online. Look, you guys, before he left, Hobby, Hobby brought me a cup of coffee and I wasn't didn't pay attention. Now it's getting cold. Hi, Kathy. You can use, Anne says she's used dental floss. I haven't used dental floss. So there you go. Anna's used dental floss and she likes it. So that's all that matters. Find what you like using. I personally like wax linen thread. <coughs> Joyce says even 10 crochet cotton. I guess it must be number 10 crochet cotton, Joyce. Is that like a size of crochet cotton? You know, use what you want to use. Use what you have at home. It's not, it's not, especially when you're making a junk journal. It, if you were making like something that you were going to sell or something like that, you might want to be super considerate of what you were making your stuff out of so it stayed together. But these are junk journals. And what it, when you finally get it all sewed together, it will stay together. Okay, guys, I'm liking these bright colors. Hey, CJ's parents. Your parents are here. Hi, CJ's parents. We're happy to meet you. Happy to see you too, CJ. I hope you have fun. Ooh, bring some travel brochures or maps back from the, from the, the bus from Montreal. And Cassandra, you live right in New York City. Whoever you get as your secret sister or secret Santa, you should definitely get a subway, a New York City subway map. I have to tell you, I love New York City subway maps. Linda, my color choice today is this because I think I was feeling so crappy. That's why. You guys, I was in so much pain last week. I couldn't. This week has been particularly bad as well, but... I couldn't even paint with a credit card. It was like after you get, after I, usually I paint, I try to do something every day. Like, you know, I try to make something every day, write in my journal, do some art, art journaling, do something. But this week I have felt so, the past few weeks I felt so bad I haven't done anything. Cassandra said she's already on it and got her subway map. There you go, Cassandra. You're on top of it. I think it's great. I think it's awesome. You guys, I wasn't even, I was not even feeling well enough to put my stuff. Usually I have been trying to unpack and repack some stuff like every day. Guys, I've done so little. I have felt that's how rotten I felt. Because I, what I decided it was I was going to try and fit only what I really use all the time in my small space. So instead of having like tubs filled with with stuff that I'm not I don't use very much of, I'm gonna put all those outside in the garage. So every day I was optimal word was going through and 
Every day I was going through my... <coughs> my once again packed up craft room and going through the tubs because all my stuff are in those plastic tubs, you know, like the kind that you get. They look, Some of them are shoebox size and some of them are um, bigger. And I've been trying to... I've been trying to go through, go through my stuff so that I only have what I need. Hi, Dawn! You think I need what kind of pictures, Lisa? I'm sorry, Melody, I didn't, did I miss, was it besides the wax linen I was supposed to? I love Stacey Evans. I don't know if they're doing a swap over there. You guys have to go over there and ask her. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what she's doing. Hi, BJ. You had a liver transplant, Melody. Oh no! Well, we're sending you. We're sending you love. Lucinda, I don't know. You know, I really don't know. If anybody knows the answer to Lucinda's question, ask Aunt, please answer her. I don't know. I haven't, you know what? I haven't seen what her swaps are. <coughs> Hi, Malia. How are you? You made tiny envelopes, Amberly. That's awesome. You guys know me and my envelope issues. I got them. I got some envelope issues. I'm not going to lie. Envelope issues. Love envelopes. Lucinda, I don't know because I'm not part of her group. So, I mean, I am. I'm, I'm a member of her group, but I haven't swapped over there. You guys, I haven't really swapped anywhere in a very long time. Primarily just because of my own personal stuff that I'm dealing with and just overwhelm, you know, and it's, I have, I have so much on my plate right now, I, I just can't, but I thought, you know, the only reason I decided to do a Christmas swap in our group is there's a bunch of ladies that live alone, that don't have any family, and we've sort of all become their family, and you know, I thought it would be kind of fun, especially if, you know, you're not going to receive a gift at all this Christmas. You know, nobody needs to be without a gift. You don't need to have some crazy, fancy, expensive gift. But even if it's just one gift, you know, from one of your one of your secret sisters here in Crafting Mamas, and it just is like a nicely put together package of your, of your painty papers and junk. It just makes you feel better. Amberly said, her husband, her hubby said, I didn't get it. Why would you make it? Oh, <laughs> your hubby said, I don't get it. Why would you make it? Oh, Amberly, it's all good. Hey, Tracy, how are you? Hi, Nana. We were just talking about you, Nana Tazzy. We were telling everybody, was telling everybody about your challenge. And a bunch of ladies here are subbied, so we were talking about your challenge. So I'll show you guys what it, let me just finish painting this one little, <coughs> there's a couple of encyclopedia pages that I have here and then I will show you what I am, what I started working on for her, her giveaway challenge. And I'm going to get mine mailed out. I'm actually going to put it in the post before I leave, although I know the mail doesn't pick up until Monday. No, yeah, it picks up Monday. The postman let me know that since Veterans Day falls on a holiday, it falls on a Saturday, that is what they're taking. Um, Deb says, Kathy's saying she's having a waterfall card challenge. You make two and post them in her group. 
And Lisa says, Lucinda, don't worry. You can ask anything here. Let it go. They, I think people want to be helpful, but they feel like they don't know how to be helpful if they don't know. And then Deb says, it, Lisa says, it's going to make her cry when she gets a secret Santa envelope. And Deb says, I don't think they're having, they're having one. And he swaps over there right at the moment. So there you go. Oh, they're, they're doing a waterfall of gratitude. Oh, that's awesome. You know who I bet you would know is our lovely Lizzie. I haven't seen our lovely Elizabeth Brewer. She posted me a message and said, I missed you. Where was I? What was I doing? But you know what, you guys, I love her so much. She brings me joy. Don't you guys feel that way about her? Don't you feel that way about her? I feel that way about her. Elizabeth Brewer, a.k.a. Scrappin' Lizzie. If you guys haven't gone over and joined Elizabeth Brewer's channel, Scrappin' Lizzie, you have to. She is a hoot and a half. Lizzie's making art dolls. Okay, so then Lizzie's not making the waterfall. You guys are so funny. Lizzie is so funny. She makes me laugh. You know what I love is like when one of her kids or somebody walks in and she's like, you know, I'm talking to YouTube right now. <laughs> I just love it. Guys, that's probably going to be me when I'm older. <clears throat> but I love her. So go over and show her some love and support her channel too. You can't, I can't get enough of Miss Elizabeth Green and I mean Miss Elizabeth Brewer and I love Miss Shannon Green as you guys know. Did you guys see Shannon Green's post on the Ardo mat? If I felt good. Cassandra says, the Pink Poodle says that for Pink Poodles, it is all about the gratitude challenge. So there you go. The gratitude. Did you guys see Stacy's new craft room? Oh my God. I'm in total craft room envy. She moved her craft room to another to like the master bedroom of her house. And it is gorgeous, you guys. Her craft room it looks like a dream come true. I was like, ah, oh, way to go. Way to go, Miss Stacy Evans. You guys, I have a Miss Stacy Evans journal. I'll have to show it to you one time. I'll have to do, I'll have to do my celebrity journal haul. How about that? Would you guys like that one week? I'll do that one week and you guys can laugh. And my celebrity YouTube journal haul. I thought that Stacy will tell you she, you know what I mean, you guys. You know how you, like your fan, I should say my fangirl, right? Because if you're a fangirl from somebody, you have something from them. I have a really cool journal Stacy made me a while ago. I want to say, might even be two years ago, you guys. It's super cool. I love it. Right now, all my stuff is still, you guys, I felt like so yucca this week. I had all these grandiose plans and my energy was so low from my shoulder pain. Oh, I got an amazing journal, but it's been a, it's been a couple of years, Samantha. Hi, Constance. The Ardo mat thing sounds like a blast. Okay, I have to tell you though, I can't make a hundred of anything right now or fifty of anything right now. Because I'm doing just good to like get the few things I need to get done done. I'm not even gonna have my journals finished in time to be in my Etsy shop for the holidays. I was hoping to, but with this shoulder thing, it's not even gonna happen. I'm almost done painting these pages. Then we'll make some embellishments, but I'll show you my my page that I'm making. I haven't finished it. I've only sewn some things on it. I don't know. I think I'm going to add some tags to it or something. I don't know. Or maybe some envelopes or something. I don't know. It's the only thing I got done today. Okay. And then I had to go for acupuncture. And then when I came home for from acupuncture, I would I had to lay down. It knocked me out. 
Okay, these are only one side, but I'm digging them. And I'm gonna, this is just the beginning of some painted papers. I think I will go back and paint on the back of some of them. Maybe not all of them, but some of them. And I'm liking them. Like these are some, these all need like the next element, you know, the next level of painting paper part on them, but I'm liking them. Oh, BJ, it's, I have to tell you, it is like too much. Yeah, so you guys have to go over watch Shannon Green's Art Omat, Art Omat video. It's so funny. So these are like for the next step of my painting papers, okay? Now let me show you, let me clean up my little space here for like one second and let me not spill my coffee on it because that would really not make me happy. Sometimes I laid my phone down somewhere over here and I know it's going to ring and I don't know where it is. This is that, remember I always talk to you about that chalkboard paint that I've had for like years and it keeps giving. Constance, my email address is, oh my gosh, it's crafting, I think it might be crafting mama's info. You know what? It's at the bottom of some of my videos. You know what? After we're off of here, Constance, if you mess, if you post a comment in under the video, I'll send, I'll comment back to you what the email address is. I think it's usually on my videos, but it might not be. Pain is definitely a knock out the schedule kind. It is I have to tell you it's probably one of the worst I've had three children and that's how it was I mean it was so bad okay so um you have uh, Nana if you want to uh, Tracy if you want to join the secret Santa so the, you'll get a you'll get your person your person on the 21st if you, you have to sign up between now and the 21st of November then you get your person and then you mail out by the 15th of December. So it gives you, I don't know, a little less than a month to finish it all, but probably most of it is stuff you have in your stash anyway. It's painty papers, it's, you know, book pages, napkins, handmade envelopes, handmade library pockets, that sort of thing. Just bits and pieces you want to put in there. I'm going to keep working on mine during out this whole time so that you guys in some paper clip embellishments or any sort of little embellishments you want to make. Um, I'm going to, hi Kiki, I'm going to keep, oh no, Kiki tooth pain is worse too. I have my, guys, I'm old and I had my wisdom teeth taken out like, I don't know, like three years ago or two or three years ago. And I have to tell you, it was ridiculous. It was so painful. Not the actual having my teeth, but the weeks ahead, the weeks after. Yeah, it's it's supposed to be funny. It's fun, Tracy. It's not supposed to be stressful. Okay, so let me show you guys the page that I'm doing for my... The, but before I do that, this is the chalkboard paint that keeps on giving. So if you want a piece of... Uh, what is the brand? Guys, I don't know because it's, it's called chalkboard paint. I don't know if there's a brand. You guys, generic brown chalkboard paint. It's by American Crafts. So it's American Crafts Chalkboard Paint. I've had it for like four years. And you guys, I think it multiplies inside the bottle. And I've used it on everything. Everything, everything, everything. Yes, you're right. At least after childbirth, you have a beautiful child. After shoulder pain, I don't know. You know what I decided, though, after this? I'm never going to do anything. I, I'm going to do whatever I can to deter this type of body pain ever again. And I don't know exactly what that means, but I think it means that I may have to, like, <coughs> I don't know. Because I don't even know how I hurt myself. That That's even the most, that's even more ridiculous than any of it, is I don't know how I hurt myself to have the shoulder pain. Okay. This is what I'm sending for my junk journal page for It's Nana's Place, Nana Tazzy's um, Challenge challenge sebi giveaway so what I did was I painted on a magazine page because you know me I've got to paint on a magazine page I cannot not paint on magazine pages because you guys know me that's just who I am so 
I painted on a magazine page and you can see still some of the magazine writing underneath it, which is the whole point. And then I lined the inside with a piece of that Japanese workbook. And then I sewed and my sewing machine was having a moment, but I just let it be messy. I was going to take it out and redo it again. I said, no, I'm just going to let it be. And then I sewed a piece of a map page in. So this is my page so far. So I think I'm going to fill my page with, I might put some tags or some bits and pieces in my page. And I don't know where I'm going to sign it. Maybe I'll sign it back here. I also thought about adding some pockets inside. So if she wanted to go ahead and put a pocket over my painting, she could, you know, because I don't know what she's going to use it for. So this is my, this is my, it's Nana's place beginning of my, of my journaling page for, for her challenge. So make sure if you guys want to go on over, what I do too many painting papers, is that what you said, Lisa, or you do too many? Um, so if you guys want to go over and join her challenge, go on over. It's called it, her channel's called It's Nana's Place, and she is giving away a cool. I'm well. I paint. My sewing wasn't great, you guys. The one thing I have to tell you about when you use a sewing machine is you gotta have a dull needle and not a sharp needle in my sewing machine. So it decided to have a moment on one side. So I just reset over it. It's a little bit messy, but. It'll be fine for a journaling page. You think I was quick? I don't know if I was quick. I'm going to try to put some extra things in it and get it mailed to you before I leave. Because otherwise, guys, I'm so not feeling good. I don't know when I would do it. But I'm liking it. You know what I like about painting on magazine pages is that, I don't know, I like the fact that they've got colored words underneath it. I like the fact that just about anything you do to it is going to make it look better than it was. The rules for its Nana's place was that you might want to put it in the in the little description box trace and you know tell everybody. I thought it was a page. It could either be it has to fit in a four by six envelope and you can do a, a page that's fits, you know, that's like this, a big page fold doesn't have to fit in, or you could do a small page, a four by six size, and then that part would be folded. And her only one rule was keep in mind that it needs to be sewn into a journal. So don't, if you're going to do texture paste or anything on it that you don't put any in the crack in the, you know, fold. So I liked it too. Well, it's a challenge giveaway, Kiki. Hers is a challenge giveaway. She's doing a 500 subby giveaway in her group. It's just one art journal page. And yours could be like different than mine. It doesn't have to be like mine. Mine was just, I don't know. You know me, I'm obsessed with painting magazine pages right now. So mine was magazine page painting. Okay, so I've got my, I'm gonna do some paper clip embellishments. I've got my box of eyeballs here. I got my cardboard for it. So if you guys have never made paperclip embellishments with me, you guys know I'm a little on the outlandish, odd, crazy side. I like to make them. Yes, yes, Tazzy, put it, put it on there. Put it in our group so everybody can join. You guys, it's a great way to support her channel. You guys, we have a beautiful worldwide community that, if you think about it, we'd never be crafting together up until now because we all live so far away from each other. And now, because we have YouTube live streaming, Ustream live streaming, Facebook Live, all the options that you have now, 
you can reach a broader group of people and we can all hang together so we can all share our crafty our crafty besties and our crafty goodness with each other and super fun so I'm gonna cut all the end parts off first because I think that's what I'm gonna use unless I have a big eyeball and I'm making an eyeball you guys can make it out of anything I like making shoes too but I don't have my shoe I have a whole box of shoes cut out of everything you guys I think I have a little I think I have some issues I'm not gonna lie okay so and I cut out um, so here's some of my eyeballs that I cut out you guys I'm sorry I have a box of eyeballs and I also like to make them with these pieces maybe I'll give this in my thing too this is just like a big diamond cut off and what I do after I've glued it on to I make my hidden paper clip and after I've glued it on to the embellishment I put some sort of dimensional glaze on it so that it um, so that it works good so let me see. I also do watches too. So maybe we'll do some eyeballs and some watches. I don't know why I like eyeballs. I just do. Oh, and here's a, here's a plant. I did some flowers. Love this one. This one's hilarious. Like the turkey and the high heels. This had to have come out of like a store flyer. And it's already glued onto the back of some sort of packaging. You guys, I got eyeballs galore in here. Eyeballs and I've got eyeballs and I have watches. I have watches, clocks, and eyeballs. Can you tell where I was going with my thoughts right there? Oh, and these must be some jewelry pieces. This was a coin from a, a magazine, really thin. Cassandra's telling me, did I know that the East Coast is having a deep freeze, cold snap, so be forewarned and dress warm. Cassandra, I have no warm clothes. <coughs> I had to borrow a coat. Hey, Arlena. Post the rules. Yep. Um, Susan posted a link to your channel already, Nana. So I think that if you posted the rules, that'd be super awesome. Post the rules. Cut and paste on Mama. Go for it. Can I, Susan says, can anybody see what she's typing? I can see you now. I didn't see you before because I wasn't looking. I was looking at eyeballs. What do you type? What, what, what did I miss? I was looking at eyeballs. Okay, good night, Sandra. Everybody can see you, Susan. I must have missed it because I was looking at eyeballs. I'm like... And I'll show you guys how to do my hidden paper clip thing. If you want to know if you've missed it by any means. I don't know how you could have. But isn't that a cool eyeball? Like, isn't that a cool one with the makeup? I love this eyeball too. It's kind of a big eyeball. I guess this paper clip should look down. I don't know. Maybe it could look this way. I don't know. This one was a cool one too. This one's quite large, but I thought it was cool. The mouth of the bumblebee. Oh, Susan's posted the rules three times. My magazine clipping box would have been good for your for your video, Malia. I loved your video. Sorry, Susan. Hey, Tracy, it's good. Susan said she'll do it again. Everybody says they see you, Chuck. You like eyeballs. You guys, I don't know why I like all these eyeballs, all right? I don't know why. I also do shoes, too, but this was my box of eyeballs, okay? This was my... These are ones I've been working on because they all have, like, stuff glued on them, so I already glued them all down. So I'll give you guys a... Let me find a couple that haven't been glued down so I can give you guys a 4 in one how I do it, and then I'll show you how I make my hidden paper clip. This is my box of, like... I don't know. Because I have one. Oh, see, I was making paper dolls. Can you see? Like, if this one has body parts, too. This one has body parts. I was making mermaids. That's what I was making. I made mermaids. Because I sent somebody a mermaid paper doll. I don't know why, you guys. And I was, I guess I was going to do fingernail polish, too. Well, let me just show you. Let me find. I need to show you without. I need to find some that don't have any. Um, anything on the back first and I'll show you what I do and then you guys can 
But look, I was going to do some visor. Isn't that like, isn't this ridiculous? Like, look, it's like a, it's like a shiny visor. Susan says, here's the rules. You must be 18 and a visible subscriber. These are for the posting for Nana's group, Nana's Place. May can send one art journal page, and it can be folded in half as it will be a signature. Be a signature. Must fit a 6 by 9 envelope. See address below. Your page gets two chances to win. There you go. And no, it, uh, Clara, you can make, for, for the Secret Sister, you can make your library pockets any size you want. You know, Lucinda, I don't have any warm clothes, you guys. I do not have any warm clothes. Okay, I heard my phone go off, which is a good sign, but it doesn't mean I know where it is. You guys, this is what happens. I came over here, I started painting papers, Patty brought me coffee, and I got this new phone. I finally got a new phone, and I love it, but oh, I found it. It's my daughter. I found it, but it, it, it slides off of everything. My daughter was asking me what time does she have to be home. <coughs> oh my gosh. You can, Edna, you can make your, you guys can make your library pockets any size you want. I have to pay attention. What did I miss, Joyce? Okay, so everybody has Nana's rules and now you know. Okay, so follow those rules. Go over and join her challenge and you guys will enjoy it. Okay, so what I do for, for making my embellishments is I'm going to do it with these and then I'll make the hidden paper clip with the other ones. So I guess I do need a big piece of the box. So what I do is I take one of these, any sort of a, any sort of a box like a packaging, piece of packaging, and I glue with permanent glue, you guys, with like a permanent glue stick. I glue down the image to the brown side of the of the box, okay? And I do a whole bunch at one time. I don't, I don't, um, now realize you're going to have to fussy cut these. So if you're not a fussy cutter, you might want to, maybe you do them less, maybe pick, sometimes I get some intricate things to fussy cut, okay? Now the idea, these are all going to be like planner embellishments, journal embellishments, you know, and you can use anything. If you have photographs of yourself, anything you want to use, okay, there's no, no rules. Just because I like eyeballs and watches doesn't mean you have to like eyeballs and watches, okay? So I glue down a bunch. I get a bunch going. I leave enough room in between so that I can cut them out. Okay, so I don't need to do this really big one right now. So I do that first. Okay, and then you want to make sure that they're dry. And I always use a glue stick. I know some of you ladies are diehard uh, wet glue people. When you're using, somebody posted in our group the other day, they said, how do you keep magazine pages from wrinkling? And my take on it is it's the wetness in the paint or the wetness in the glue that you use that wrinkles them, okay? So then go ahead and cut out your, take the time to fussy cut out your watches, whatever, your eyeballs, your watches. I do shoes, handbags, um, I guess I have, a, I, I like all different, the weirder the better in my world, you know, within reason. But now with Christmas coming up, you guys are going to have some really cool stuff to cut out. You can use throwaway magazines. You can use um, just about anything. Now the reason you want to use permanent glue stick is because you're going to use some sort of a water soluble glaze over the top. And I use diamond glaze, but there's also stickles, there's Mod Podge, there's a Mod Podge glossy, there's an Aileen's glossy, there is, um, you could use some glue, the 
the PVA style glue, whatever works for you. There's no right or wrong. Okay, so then I have that one's already done. And sometimes what I do is I glue, I get a big cereal box and I go for it and I just glue a bunch of stuff down on one huge side of a cereal box and then I just start cutting. You know, it does help if you have a good pair of scissors, I'm not going to lie. Um, where's our lovely Bet? She's the queen of fussy cutting and she can for, she can tell you the 411 on what kind of scissors to get for her fussy cutting because she fussy cuts and she enjoys it, she finds it relaxing. But nothing's worse than fussy cutting with really dull scissors. So, you know, designate a pair for fussy cutting that you just use on, you know, fussy cutting and you don't cut like cardboard and, you know, heavy cardboard. I'm not talking about this, but you don't cut a bunch of other stuff with it. It makes it easier. So you just cut around it until you... until you've cut out all your things. So that's two and three. But you see how fast it goes? So, you know, just make it stuff you really like. Remember, you're sending people things you're making. If you're making these embellishments for your swap, you want to send people stuff you like, stuff you would want to receive. Don't, don't just do it because it's easy. Do it because you go, I think that's really cool. I really, I particularly like high heels, you guys. I love, I have made a whole bunch. I don't know where, I'll have to show them to you. I've, I've given tons of them away. I think Wendy was here last week talking about how Wendy from the channel Reused Muse, if you guys haven't seen her work, it's awesome. So I did a swap with her, and I think, I don't know how, I think I sent her eyeballs. I don't know if I sent her eyeballs or if I sent her shoes. I might have sent her both, okay? <coughs> so generally what I would do after this is I would take it back to the piece of this, and I would trace it around. And you want to use a finer tip pen or pencil, which of course, okay, there's one I was going to say. There's none on my desk, but there is. So after you've done one, you want to go back and you want to trace whatever you are making your paperclip embellishment out of. And you want to trace it image side up, like the shiny side of the paper up, because the other back side of it is going to be brown. And that will be what's behind your paperclip. Okay. Now, if you have a circle punch and you want to do my hidden paper clip, if you guys have watched my my hidden paper clip video where I make a whole bunch of blanks, you can do that too. The, the thing is, is your blank needs to be smaller smaller than the piece you're doing so you don't see it. Okay, so then do you see I've traced it just like that. Now I'm going to cut it out. Are you guys talking about burritos? You guys are so funny. You made homemade burritos. They're so funny. Okay, I'm going to fussy cut around this, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to get my Rambo knife. I'm going to show you how I do my hidden paper clips. Now, don't worry if you don't cut this one so perfect, because it's going to be hidden behind the other one. You may have to trim it a little, because it's going to be a slightly bigger than the piece that you're gluing it on the back of and you want it to be smaller so you're gonna I would just cut it out as you've traced it first and then just see how much extra you have to cut off of it unless you're an expert which some of you are an expert um, measurer or you know you have really good depth perception and you can see things whereas I can't always you guys doesn't work that way for me. Okay. So do you see the whites, the white sticking out a little bit around? I need to go back and trace it. I mean, cut a little bit more off. Okay. So this is what I have. I have my image glued with glue stick on to the brown side or the natural side of the cardboard you're packaging. And I've fussy cut around it. I've glued it down with 
water with waterproof with a permanent glue stick and then I've laid it down face up on top of the packaging and I've traced around it and I've fussy cut it. Now I need to trim it a little so that we don't see it behind the so we don't see it behind the um, paper clip behind the image. I mean, I guess you could, you could, you could, if it didn't really bother you, you could just go ahead and ink the edges of it all, and then you wouldn't see it. Or if you don't mind, then keep it the way it is. I mean, guys, there's no rules. These are just paper clip embellishments. What's kind of fun is if you get some really cool cards, Christmas cards or birthday cards or stuff like that, and you think the images are cool, you can make some cool paper clip embellishments from them doing it this way. I haven't passed. Okay, let's see if I trimmed off enough. Okay, I think I have. I've trimmed off enough. Okay, now here is my where my Rambo knife comes in play. All right, let me find. Guys, I usually have a piece of hard plastic here, and I don't. I have this brown bag. Let me see. <coughs> okay, you need your Rambo knife. You need your paper clip. Okay, you do need, at this point, you do need some wet glue. I like to use Aliens Tacky Glue. Don't need a lot, but you need some, okay? Guys, see, I can't even work neat, no matter what I try. Oh, Linda, your eyes are burning. Oh, I hope you get some rest. Girl, I can relate. I'm falling apart lately. I am so falling apart, I can't even tell you. All right, I'm gonna wait for my glue. Where's my glue? I can feel it coming out the bottle, but it's not coming fast enough. What are you guys talking about? I'm missing the whole thing. You're talking about food? Hi, AJ. How are you? Is this your first time here? Hi, Kate. Is this your first time, AJ? Where are you from? AJ says he's trying to make doll furniture out of popsicle sticks. Okay, cool. I've never made doll furniture out of popsicle sticks. You're from California? Okay. Joyce, you're cooking at midnight? Okay, guys, that's why the glue wasn't coming out the lids. The lid is stuck. How many of you guys have, like, half-filled glue bottles everywhere? I try to add water to some of mine so that I can keep them. Okay, you don't need a ton of glue, but you do need some. This is because, and the reason you need a wet glue, you know, I just said don't use wet glue, but... But when you're gluing the paper clip inside, you need wet glue. Okay. You need wet glue. When you're glu gluing the paper clip <clears throat> inside, you need wet glue. Okay, because I don't want to cut my brown bag, I'm going to stick it on top of this. Okay, so what you want to decide when you're making your... I'm sorry, Susan, was it bad? I, I missed it. I'm not paying attention. You guys. Hey, Malia, I can relate. Okay, so you want to decide which way your paper, like which side, because you've cut this exact to your image. You want to decide, do you want your paper, do you want your image to go into your journal this direction? Do you want your image to go in your to the journal the other direction? Because that will be deciding where your paper clip is going to be. And that decides where you're going to put your notch. So I want my paper clip to go over here because I want it to slide into the journal this direction. So then I'm going to put my notch right here. 
Now this is where you use your Rambo knife and you have to be careful, okay? You want to notch wherever you're putting your paper clip. You want to go to the to the as close to the end without getting to the end as you can. And you want to make a notch. This is if you want a hidden paper clip. If you don't want to what a hidden paper clip does is it holds it flush to the page. And I'll show you what I mean. And you do the same thing with your eyeballs. Okay, if you if you're making eyeball paper clips too. <coughs> It was just a kid. Okay, cool. Okay, so this is the key. You want to go ahead and put your paper clip through the. This is going to be the back. You want to put your paper clip. The, I use the big side out and sandwich the small side in. Okay, so does everybody see that? I put a notch in my in my packaging. Put the big side of the pit. Slip my paper clip in. Put the big side. This is the part that's going to flip to the journal, and this is the part that's going to be inside. I like the bigger side because it gives you a longer place to put your so there you go. Yeah, you know what? You guys think it's a kid, but sometimes it isn't. Sometimes there are gamers that like look like it, that. I don't know. You guys, I've had so many troll experiences lately. It's been ridiculous. Okay, so you want to use a good quality glue because because you're putting paper to metal. You know, you're sandwiching your paper clip inside. No, don't cheap out. Use use a nicer glue. We all have a nicer glue. It's only on one thing. You know, I'm not saying use E6000, but I'm saying don't use really, and don't use watered down glue, okay? You want to use it full strength, and you want to, you know, you can spread it thinner, but you don't want to use, don't cheap out and use watered down glue. A couple things will happen, I'm just telling you from my own experience, is that you're, you're, the more water content into your piece, the more, um, the more buckling you'll get. Yeah, they do come into live feeds and start blasting comments, and they say rude things, and I don't know, you guys. It, it does. You, one would wonder why people spend five seconds coming into a, a crafting venue. I have no idea. You know, I don't pay attention. But evidently, according to my son-in-law who works for um, Google and YouTube and all that, they, they're they're trying to they're going to start disbanding IP addresses for people that do come in and do that because basically what's happening is people are heading over to Ustream and you know YouTube's all about money so you know it's all about they make money on advertising and they can't advertise when people aren't on there so I take other paper clips and I go ahead and I anchor it down so that it dries. You need to let it dry. You can't be you can't be in a hurry when you're using making these because you want it to dry and dry well. And thank you, Susan, for being um, for being the popo because we appreciate it. So this is that was it, you guys. That's the extent of my hidden paper clip. Now afterwards, after it's completely dry, the glue's dry. I go back and I use my diamond glaze. And I paint it on top or my stickles or glue or whatever because you want it to have a durable surface because people are going to be taking them on and off their, their planners. <laughs> Susan says, Popo don't give attention. She gives attention. She does. Nobody nobody, ever be messing with the Popo here. Okay, so I'm going to let that one dry. But you guys, it's as simple as it gets. <clears throat> I do the same thing with the eyeballs. Okay, so and any of the other ones. I'm just gonna see. I'm gonna show you guys how I do my hidden paper clip part. But so let me just show you. This is how I make my blanks. So if you guys have a circle punch, I suggest you get a good one. If you don't invest a lot, or you can draw them by hand, but if you don't invest a lot in a lot of things, getting a good circle punch really helps. Um, this one's great. It's by Stampin' Up. I don't know how much it was. I didn't pay for it. Somebody gave it to me. Okay. So I sometimes I just take my packaging, and we all have it, right? Punch out a bunch of circles from my packaging, and I make myself blanks. 
and these blanks. And if you have different size circle punches, you can make different size blanks for your for your things, right? So then what I would do, I'd do a similar thing. I notch one end, just pick an end, it doesn't matter because it's the circle. You want it to be kind of close, and I'll hold it up to the camera so you guys can see it. You guys get a different mount knife. You don't have to have a Rambo knife. This was just, you guys, I live in the house with a bunch of other artists, and there's nothing sacred, especially my stuff because mine looks like trash, whereas many of them have really nice things. So poke the, poke the small side, the, the big side out, and the small side in. Okay, and then I just glue. I go ahead and I glue my two pieces together. And if you have all these made up ahead of time, if you find some cool magazine images, or if you find, you know, make your circle smaller. If you find cool things that you want to put on them, I've also used the same type of thing for my flowers. You know when you're making your your paper bag flowers? I'm just gonna go ahead and glue it on. And you do you do want to go ahead and clip your things together. Oh my gosh, you guys. I wish one of you guys lived close enough for me to come hang out with you for a few days when I'm in Boston. I would love to come and meet somebody for dinner or hang out or, I don't know, do something fun. It would make me happy. It would make me happy to come and paint papers with somebody. Oh my gosh, are we, are we getting troll invaded? Oh my gosh. We miss you, Vicky Pearl. Where are you, Miss B.A.? We miss you. Thank you, Susan. I'm so sorry. Okay. So, after they dry, okay, this one's just got a bunch of, you know, it's trying to, I'm trying to hold it together with some clips. Well, after they dry, we'll show you. Now, you could take your eyeball. See how I made this eyeball? I could glue my eyeball on the back of it like this without having to cut extra, and that would be a good pa hidden paper clip. You could also, depending upon how you want your, if you make your templates, you know, see how the paper clip can go this way or that way? I'm crafting. Jane, if I could stop, you know what, Jane, I have to go back, and on my next trip, I will definitely stop over in Portland, and I'll come and hang out with you. Kate says, hi, Pat. What, Malia said, what, someone called you once and said, if you had straws, because they stuck all the straws up their nose. What? <laughs> Was that like a prank call? Okay, guys, let me hear my best prank call story. Oh, you lurkers, say hi. Okay, here's my best prank call story. I was, you guys, my, I had wonderful grandparents. I had wonderful parents, okay? I, can, I, I have no, you know, some people want to complain about how, they're, how they had parents that were this or that. I didn't have that, you guys. I had such great parents. I think I'm going to make a painty paper one, too. I had such wonderful parents. I cannot complain about anything. But anyway, just to make you guys laugh, we haven't had a good laugh. We, we need a good pickle dish laugh, okay? Okay, so she said, Lucinda said, the more her grandmother got mad. So repeat it again, Lucinda, and I'll read it out loud. I would totally craft in coffee. Are you kidding? I'm a coffee crafter. We'll be together one day, Tracy. I promise. What happened, Scotty? What did I miss? We do love you. Tracy, Nana Tazzy. Okay, you have to repeat it again, Lucinda, and I'll read it out loud. I missed it. So I'll tell you guys my, my crank call story. So I must have been, I must have been, I don't know, 
in college and I was spending the night with my grandmother. And the phone rings in the middle of the night. And my grandmother, I hear her get up, she shuffles in. You know, like it was like one of those old fashioned houses where the phones, like you have one phone in the kitchen and you have one phone in the hall, like in the hallway near between the bedrooms, you know, in case somebody calls you late at night, which nobody ever does, unless somebody's dead, right? That's how it works in the South. I don't know about anywhere else here, but I mean, maybe this was etiquette from a long time ago. So, night, Nana. Anyways, so the phone rings and I hear my grandmother go, I hear my grandmother go, hello, and I hear her go, um, she's like, <laughs> she's like, hello, and then I hear her say, uh-huh, uh-huh, and then I hear her go, oh my, and then I hear her ha go, hang on, you don't want me, you want my granddaughter, Shelly, and I was like, and so, I mean, I can hear, and so she knocks on the bedroom door, and she's like, it's for you. Now, you guys, it's in the middle of the night. Hi, Kit. It's in the middle of the night. So I answer the phone. I get up in my grogginess, and I answer the phone. And I, and this guy says, oh, my God. He says, um, you know, just something totally, like, lewd, like, you know, you can imagine. Breathe, he's breathing heavy. He was breathing heavy, first of all. He's breathing heavy. And, um... He's breathing and breathing and breathing heavy. And I go, hello. And then I hear him breathing and breathing and breathing heavy. And then I hang up. And then I, I'm like, I said, Grandma. She goes, it wasn't for me. I'm too old for that. <laughs> so Lucinda said, so you guys, my grandmother's are right. Okay, Lucinda says she got a prank call. And they said, do you have a John in your house? And Lucinda said, we, <laughs> when she said no, they said, do you poop in the sink? Oh, no, Lucinda, that's hilarious. But my grandmother, can you imagine? She wakes me up so that I can hear some guy breathing heavy, and, and then he says something lewd, and my grandmother says I'm too, she's too old for that. Okay, so then the other one was, her. can you imagine? She was right. and But she, the thing was, she listened to it. She was like, oh, well. I mean, she was like, I, it was, <laughs> anyway, I was like, serious. I was in college. I will never forget it. I was like, Grandma, I was like, seriously, this is ridiculous. And she was like, well, he didn't want me. She goes, why would he want me? You know? Anyway. I would have been laughing too, Lucinda. No, so what else happened? Okay, so then my sister was little at the time. I'm I'm like seven years older than my sister. So my sister must have been like 10 or 11 when I was, you know, freshman in college. I went to college when I was 17. So the phone rings. And it's not in the night. It's in the day. And this person says, ah. Amberly says her grand her husband's grandmother got upset over the Lion King when Scar killed Mufasa. Oh, I can relate. So my sister's like, missed him about ten or eleven, and the phone rings. It's in and it's in the daytime, or maybe it's early evening, you know. And she says, I can hear her say, No. You got the wrong house. You must want my friend Cherie. And then she goes, hang on, I'll get you her number. And I'm like, who is it? And she goes, she goes, it's somebody on the phone. And he says, I want to eat your pussies. And she goes, I told him we don't have any cats. He want, wants my friend Cherie. So I got to find her number so he can call her because he wants want you guys. That was my life between my grandmother waking me up in the middle of the night for somebody who's breathing heavy telling them that they have the wrong person to my sister when she was little trying to give out her friend Cherie's number because somebody wanted that. Yep, that's my life. You guys get it, don't you? So when you're making these paper clip embellishments, it's ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. My sister, I never will let her forget it. Of course, you know, she's grown and I'm always calling her up and I'm <laughs> saying stuff like that to her. I'm like, hey, can I have Cherie's number? <laughs> you laughed and she got mad. Why would she get mad? 
Oh my God, you guys, do you, well, but you know, Cassandra, she was so young, she didn't know and naive. My grandmother waking me up, somebody breathing heavy. The worst part was her like listening to it. Like she was like listening to it for like a couple, like at least 30 seconds or a minute before she said, oh my. She was like, you want my granddaughter and she wakes me up. Okay, so you guys, that's my life. Okay, so here's one of the blanks that's dry. I think it must be dry by now, okay? So see, this is a blank that you could make out of your packaging and you could have a whole bunch of these. And if you could, you could cut them freehand, you don't have to cut them with this. But, rem but see how cool it would be? You could put your eyeball on it. You see, in the highest, higher up you put it, let me just show you. Like, look, the cool thing about, and the reason I even did it like this is because, have you guys ever made a journal? And the paper clip, like here's one of those paper clips. See how they sit down flush? They sit, most paper clips sit really high up. And you can make your sitting high up. I'm not saying that. Like, look at this one. This one sits high up. So this one pokes itself off the journal page, okay? This one is going to sit flush down. So if you want your eyeball or whatever you're gluing on there, depending upon where you glue, if you glued it to the top of the eyeball, right, it would sit all the way down on your page. Or you could glue it up here. Or you could, do you see what I'm saying? The blank. So where's the one that I did? Uh, here's the watch. The watch must be, the watch must be, um, but you can use this for anything. Okay, see how it sits down on the page? Instead of sitting up, it sits down on the page. All right, so that's that's my paperclip thing. Do I know Joyce? What? Hey, Beth. Oh my gosh, tonight's like a troll of ridiculousness. Go, Susan. Go, Susan. Go, 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 Popo. Go, Popo. Don't glue my eyeballs together. Oh, I won't. But do you see? Now, look, this is one I made out of the painty papers. Now, you guys have, I told you, you know, like somebody asked me, what do I do with all my scrap pieces? Like, I think that's a cool paper clip embellishment. What do you guys think? Now, I haven't added any dimensional glaze to it, but I could. And if you wanted to go back and stamp something on top of it, you could. Hi, Mary Kay. Your, your, your mom allowed you to be finger, your, your mom allowed you to, to be naive. I think it's great. You know what? I have a daughter, my 11 year old, I try to keep her as naive as possible. You know, it's like they grow up too fast. So just so you guys see, so like, remember we talked about like last week, like what do you do with the scraps of your painting papers that are like this? You know, and a lot of times I will make these types of paper clip embellishments out of them so that you know they can you can use them in you can use them in all kinds of journaling things you don't have to it doesn't have to be strictly um i made flowers out of this one but remember we talked about last week how how you have like all sorts of You want me to be your secret sister? You know, we do have some secret popo training, Cassandra. <laughs> She's got some serious popo training, Cassandra. Don't be messing with Susan. She She's the popo and she will get you. Um, We do have some ladies that are going to be, she is quick draw. I'm telling you, she's fast. Unlike the day that I wasn't fast. When we had poor, poor Barb Owen and her son in the in the house, and they had to like endure my ridiculous poponess, the my like not no, not knowing how to get rid of a troll. Because I'd only had a troll happen to me one time before then, and it was not, and it wasn't nearly as bad as the one that day. That one was horrible. Thanks to Susan, man, she was like she was popo on the job, man. I don't. I really don't understand what the joy of being so ridiculous is. She is on the job. Susan knows. She's she's got popo radar. She's got she's got she's got troll dar. Well, all I wanted to tell you guys is that, you know, 
when you're making your stuff for your se your secret sister, make stuff you love because they're going to post pictures in the group. And the last thing you want to do is to be like the Have you ever gone? Have you ever been in like a school situation where like somebody got like the best thing but everybody else got the lame thing? Well, you don't want to be the one that gives the lame thing. So make it something you enjoy. I'm not trying to put pressure on you, but I'm just saying make something you like put some energy into it. You know, enjoy it, but put some energy into it. You went shopping at Joann's and at the Dollar Tree? Oh my gosh, that sounds like so fun. That sounds super, super, super fun. Super fun. I will show you how to make stencils, you guys. And sadly, I had a whole but I've been making stencils for years. And sadly, and I make them out of trash and cardboard. Anything that's like, do you guys ever buy sheets? And those sheets come in those plastic zipper bags. I love those, okay? I don't know why I do, but I do. Well, I had some in one of those. And I had some in a little, like a shoe box. Like a real shoe box, not a plastic shoe box. My daughter thought it was crap because it just looked like painted up cardboard and I, I try to make most of the stuff that I'm making my things out of out of recycled materials because as I've explained to you guys multiple times when you live on an island you definitely don't want you definitely don't want um, You definitely don't want landfill stuff if you can help it here. You know, you really become very conscious of, much more conscious than you ever were when you live on an island. And when you live on an island and everything that you don't recycle ends up in the ocean. It, I'm telling you, some days that in itself can make me upset. So... I made all these stencils and I told you she was here helping me and she threw away a bunch of my stuff and you guys I wasn't paying attention to everything you know she's not a crafter so I think sometimes crafting when you're not my level of recycled crafter it's and also to a young kid it seems pretty useless she threw away my box of but I still have some she didn't throw all of them away but she did throw away some of the ones that I thought were the coolest that I've made over, over the years. But you know what you need to do if you're gonna make some stencils? Probably the best thing for all of you guys to get, if you don't wanna like wait till you get the perfect trash piece, is to get those, the, the heavier the plastic, the better if you want them to work out for a long period of time. Although I've made many of them out of cardboard and covered them in packing tape as well. So that works too. Um, is make them out of those plastic folders, kids plastic folders. Oh, Malia, they throw my stuff away all the time. I just got it. It used to get me super upset. Now I just, you know what? I just don't even go there anymore. <coughs> there was a time when everything they did, you know, your kid, you wait, Malia. When your daughter's old enough, she'll go through it. If you're lucky, she won't. But every single one of mine has, and I've seen. I've seen Hottie's kids do the same thing. They go through a period where they think everything you do is stupid. Okay? Um, I've lived here in Hawaii um, about, I'm going on eight years. Stop feeding them, Samantha says. But you guys have been crafting my whole life. I mean, maybe not this style of crafting, maybe, I mean, obviously I've recycled and always make things. My kids, when they were little, used to call me a trash picker because we lived in New York City and people throw away some of the most excellent things in New York City. You can ask Cassandra. I remember one time I came home with a church pew on my head, knocked on our door. We lived in a duplex and you could see it, it was like first floor, ground floor, and we were right in the front. I remember ringing the bell to my house and my now ex-husband shaking his head like, no, you can't come in. And I said, it's for your sister because she lived in an old farmhouse in New England. And um, 
He shook his head yes and let me in, and we drove it up there. It was a beautiful, gorgeous church pew. I carried it on my head, you guys. It's so ridiculous. And it was, it was, a, it was an antique one, so it had spindle, spindles, you know, an old, old one. It was coming out of a church. They were demolishing some old church or the interior of an old church, and they were just putting, dumping everything on the street. I'm telling you, you have no idea the kind of stuff. Um, yes, I've cleaned up many times and can't find anything. It happens to me all the time. I've lived here going on about eight years. I did move off for like a minute. I had a job, job, a job I worked transferred me somewhere, and my youngest daughter hated it, so we moved back. It's not for everyone. It is a beautiful place to live, but it, it definitely is not for everyone. And if you're, if it, if you are a collector of, like, if you. Used books is one thing, but there's not a lot of um, shopping here. So if you're a shopper, it might not be for you. I'm doing live tonight, but I'm not doing next week. Tana, you didn't miss anything. We just made some painting papers and some. You found a Christmas tree before Christmas on the street? You know what I found one year? Um, I found some really cool stuff in New York City. I found um, some Eames chairs. Do you guys know Eames? I mean, I found some Eames chairs. I found um, a beautiful walnut roll top desk. It needed to be refurbished, but it was gorgeous. And I brought it home and refurbished it. Um, I found, I've gotten all kinds of stuff. I found some antique little baby cradles and stuff like that there. I've had all kinds of cool stuff in New York. New York has great trash. New York City is great trash picking. I don't care what anyone says. New York City be great. Be some awesome trash picking. In Germany, they have junket day. Was that where everybody puts? That's what hurt my shoulder. Jillian, you know, sadly here, I don't do any of that type of, there's not that stuff here. You know, I don't know how I hurt my shoulder. I honestly, it, initially, I thought it must have been from, well, you guys were around when I was doing my banana fiasco, right? The banana fiasco. But I don't think so because it happened so many weeks after the banana fiasco. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it, I don't know. I don't know how you hurt your rotator cuff. One of you ladies on there will know. There's no flea markets here, Malia. So I found some of those on the um, on the street in New York. I found all kinds of, you know what? The best find I ever had, this was a long time ago, long before I was married. Um, I found a Warhol, a Warhol, a piece by Andy Warhol. You know, remember how he made, um, he made those silk screens? Well, somebody had one of Mao Zedong, and they threw it away. It was all crinkled up. I straightened it out, took it to a paper restorer, and I earned it out. I hung on my wall for years until I had a roommate who didn't understand art and thought it was ugly. We won't even get into that. So, you know what? I've had people throw my stuff out all the time, you guys, and it's all good. It's just you just got to let it go. to let it go. You just can't even get into it. You just have to let it go, let it go, let it go. You just gotta let it go. It's just stuff. I don't know. I've, we've been talking about moving, relocating, deciding where we wanted to go if we if we moved. Because our kids are not so much my kids are having kids, but one of um, Claudie's sons, I think, is gonna have a baby soon. So we've been talking about it. 
Oh, Scotty. We have a little bit like that, but it's not old stuff. People, it's like, I, I don't know. It's a very wasteful thing here. We also live in the new society, you know, where everybody has to have new, 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 new. Your son got a cool desk when he moved to Las Vegas? That's awesome. You have to really get busy now, Diana? No. You've got plenty of time if you're talking about the swap. Um, some of the best, some of the best, some of your best classroom stuff. Cassandra, what grade do you teach? I forget. Is it fourth grade you teach? I don't remember. You guys, my head doesn't work that way anymore. I used to have the best memory. Now I have like the worst memory. So you guys kind of get the idea of my paper clips, yeah? So this is how I make them. You make, you guys make them any way that works for you. If you want your paper clips to stick up over your page, have at it. I just like it where it's flush on mine. <coughs> Yeah, no, I, I love hand-me-downs. I, I agree with you, Susan. You do you do pre-K to fifth grade? Do you do all classes? Oh, my gosh. How does that work, Cassandra? What do, do you teach a specific subject? What do you teach? Do you have your own classroom or no? Joyce says her house was was furnished with early relative. Oh, I love that, Joyce. That is such a great thing to say. Early relative. You teach math. Awesome. Vintage ephemery you have you've owned for years, Malia. That's awesome. Good night, Brenda. We're happy you're around. Brenda's saying bye to you, Pat, and she's happy that, that you introduced her to us silly crafting mamas. What was the other one? You travel from room to room, Cassandra? Ugh. It's a leather desk you found? Oh, that's awesome. Everybody's sending you love, Brenda. There, Everybody's glad you came. Everybody's glad you're here. Trying to decide how I want my eyeball. Trying to decide if I want my eyeball. I think I want my eyeball to go in that direction. You guys, there's been a ton of really cool giveaways right now on YouTube. Like, um, what was I watching the other day who's doing a, a cool giveaway? You teach world history and world religions, Ian. That's awesome. That I would love. I think that would be super awesome. World histories and world religions. How fun that would be. You like the orange lips? I know, right? I don't know where I found them. You guys, I keep the weirdest things I find. I like them. I have a whole thing of shoes. If I find, when I, you guys, I can't do it right now. But when I finally get my craft room back into its space, I'm like over moving it. I said to Hadi I should wait a month or so to watch them change their mind again. Anyway, when I finally get it all back, I will go through and find, I have a container of shoe, of shoe ones. I also have ones that have, I have, if I remember correctly, I found somebody sent me a, does anybody get those magazines, Victorian magazine? The Bees Killing You, I love that one too. The turkey one is the one I like. This one, I love this one. And I know I've had it for over a year. I might have had it longer. The turkey in high heels. It's hilarious. Um, the, I, I've done shoes. So the Victorian catalog had, I was making a tea-themed journal. And the Victorian catalog had like, a Paddington Bear and all these different things from London and I made a whole bunch of teacups, teapots and and stuff out of it. And I thought I thought they turned out great. 
the teacups and the teapots. You're not loving the bee? Okay. Good night, Malia. Malia, thank you so much. Malia, thank you so much for sharing the pictures of you and your daughter. They were so lovely, and everybody really enjoyed them in the group. So... So if you guys get those Victorian magazines, you know what I'm talking about? Scotty says she taught 7th seven, seventh and 8th seventh and art on the cart one year. Oh, I love that. She rang the bell and rolled out the cart, rolled out with the kids into the next class. School was growing so fast, I taught art and the life skills one year too. Oh, that's awesome, Scotty. Bye, Malia. Big hugs. Night, night, Malia. Malia saying hugs and love to you, Pat. You teach art too, Kate? Awesome. We don't have enough art to taught in class in schools. Okay, so here's what I have going on so far. Like, look at the eyeball. The eyeball I did. You can post, you can do it into your journaling page this direction. In fact, I might put it in my Nana Tazzy, my Nana's Place giveaway. I mean, my Nana's Place entry. It's like, look, it kind of goes with the journaling page. Like, look, isn't that cool? There's the eyeball. So there's the eyeball there and then I could also put it I could also put it you could also hang it down if you wanted it to go down but I, I could also put it on this side of the page Charlie just came back Charlie was playing with the kids so there's one eye there's one paperclip embellishment doesn't that look cool so now you guys are never gonna look at eyeballs the same way are you I like this one too. But since it's going to her her giveaway, I thought it kind of goes good with the I need to put some stuff inside of it. I need to let go of my perfectionist nature because the sewing was not good on this side. The needle was the problem with sewing paper when your needle's too sharp is that it pokes big holes. Yes, the Victorian Trading Company catalog. Yes, Lucinda. Bananas please give away if you head over there to her channel, Kate, you can see it. You just have to make a journaling page. It has to fit in a 4x6 envelope. She's doing a real good... Go over and check it out because she's got a, a challenge giveaway going on and it's great. I mean, it's... You know, we, we, we want to support her. You know, I love her artwork and she's a really cool person and she, she comes and shows me love and I think we should all show her some love too. And she's one of our crafting mamas. She's one of our crafting mamas. So you guys get the whole idea. And then you have to cut, you do have to. So the reason why you want to put a permanent glue or a glue stick that's permanent underneath it is when you're going to put your diamond glaze or your stickles or your Elmer's or whatever you're going to put on top for your glaze or for your, because um, it makes it hard. I don't have one. I thought I had one over here, but I don't. I don't know where I moved them. Um, if you've used a water-based glue, it will make the magazine page come up. Kate, it's definitely worth checking it out. Hi, Sherry. What did I miss, Dee? Oh, no. Jane said a raccoon got in her barn and ate 13 pounds of cat food. That's not good. Where are you from, Dee? I missed it. Happy to see you, Anne. Happy, happy, happy to see you. You model the hat when you take care of them. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Dee, where are you from? I missed it because it went by too fast. 
You've been sanding your baseboards, Anne. How is your arm, Anne? Is your wrist really well enough so you can be sanding your baseboards? Wow. You're amazing, Anne. I've hurt my shoulder and I couldn't sand anything if I wanted to. So you guys get the gist of my paper clip embellishment thing. Now, you know, we made all those flowers last week. If you made your, if you made your, temp your blank a little smaller, you could glue your, this, you could glue your flower to it and then put it on the paper clip. You do some cussing, Anne. Oh no. Well, use whatever you have, Sherry. I mean, it's not, it's like, do you have a PVA style glue? Use that. If you have Mod Podge or a PVA, a PVA style glue, like Elmer's Extreme or um, Elmer's Glue All, or I don't know, what are the brands of PVA glue and where you are in Canada, Sherry? I don't know what the PVA glues are. You can use Elmer's, but the whole thing is, is that you want it, whatever you, if you use a water-based glue for the base, when you add wet glue to the top or your glaze or whatever you're going to put on it, it'll pull it up. That's why you want to use a, want to use a permanent glue to glue down your paper. I like Elmer's Blue All and Elmer's Extreme. And right now I told you guys how cheap the Elmer's was. I was at Office Max or whatever it is here, Office Depot. And they were selling it for like two huge, the, the biggest bottles I've ever seen for like something so cheap. Like five, I think it was like five dollars, $8 for two or something like that. I think that's what it was. Yes, old keys. Yes, attach. You can, if you're gonna attach a key to a paperclip, Scotty. Though you want to use E6000. If you're gonna attach metal to something, use that E6000 glue. I don't think now. If one of you girls has a really good experience with, um, if any of you guys have a really good experience with like an Elmer style glue that glues metal, let us all know because I haven't. I use E6000 and that is smelly. You know, if you've never used it before, it's definitely got a smell to it. Um, but it works. It will glue, it will glue just about anything down. So I would say use your E6000 if you have it. Or invest in some. You can get a really small you can get a really small E6000 for not lot not a lot. And I think you can buy it just about anywhere. I've bought mine at the hardware store. So it's not necessarily selective to craft stores. So that's what I found. But, but you know, do what works for you. I don't, I would Google before you put it and try to, yeah, please give me a thumbs up if you guys are enjoying yourself. Trust me, the trolls always come by and give me a thumbs down. So thumbs up would be nice. If you guys are having a good time and ha like hanging out with me, I enjoy hanging out with you guys. It happens. You know, you can't get too bothered by what people do anymore. I haven't tried Bond at all because I have E6000 and I know it works. Glossy Accents works good. Anything you guys have works. Don't, you know, the whole idea is to use what you have. You know, it's not like to make a whole big deal about spending a bunch of money on something that you don't have or whatever. It's about using what you have. It is totally about using what you have and enjoying and enjoying it. Not just using what you have, but enjoying enjoying and using and giving what you have too. It's not about you shouldn't you shouldn't feel like you have to go spend any money. I mean the only thing that the only thing that should be really bought in this unless you're giving some stash that you already personally have as bought, the only thing that you should be spending any money on are the napkins and hopefully you have those. Oh, we had a couple of trolls tonight with three. It was ridiculous. Susan is the queen popo. She got she has it down. She has it down. 
I got to see a picture of Susan and Beth's new grandbaby, Madeline Jane. Oh, she's so beautiful. And she looks so wide awake. Such a cutie. So you guys, you know, give what you love. Like, whoever you get as your secret sister, make them something you want to get. You know? Make them something you would love to receive. That's the whole thing. Oh, you guys, I so really don't want to go to Boston. Is that terrible? I am so not looking forward to the cold weather. I haven't been in really extreme cold weather, I would say, I don't know, for a while. Because let's face it, if somebody's going to come, if you're going to, you know, if you have the choice to come here or you have the choice to go there, what do you do? You'd rather come here, right? Because it's warmer here. It's so much warmer here. And it's like, ugh. Because I don't even know what it feels like anymore. I used to like, I've never been a huge fan of cold weather, but I have to tell you, I think I'm a wimp when it comes to cold weather. I really do. I think I'm like the wimpiest wimp when it comes to cold weather. I don't know if my body temperature can even handle it anymore. Oh, jigsaw puzzle pieces. Those are great. Those are great. Scotty, you haven't used your Vagabond yet? Oh my gosh. The Viewmaster stencil I made from my stash. I have like a die that has a Viewmaster that, you know, and I just cut it out of packaging. Like this was like, uh, I think it was a salad box. I told you guys Hottie's in love with eating salad. So I think this was a salad box. I honestly think that's what it was. He likes his salad. So we go for the, so I try to recycle the containers. And if you guys get like scrapbooking dies and stuff like that, they come in plastic containers. And if you don't keep your things in plastic containers, which I don't, I just use, I recycle them. I also make tags out of them. Have you guys ever made tags out of your plastic stuff? They make really great tags and you can wrap, uh, wrap washi around them. I like it like that. She bought herself a, a vagabond too. Scotty, you gotta get on it, girl. You gotta start using your stuff. You gotta use up your supplies. Well, inaugurate your machine and use it for your use it for this use it for this swap. Use it for this swap. Inaugurate it. Get your get your get your dies out and start using it. <coughs> Get them out and start going for it. Get them out and start going for it. Yeah, I enjoy making painting papers. For me, you guys, it's like super relaxing. How many of you guys are relaxed when you make your painting papers? I am. I like it. I like painting papers. Guys, somebody was like, somebody sent me a comment and told me that that they like painting papers, but or they sent me a message that they like painting papers, but they like using like um, golden acrylics. Which okay, I just want to tell you guys, I love using golden acrylics, but they're so much more expensive than like these little cheap paints that I use. That I don't. I mean, I just don't think about it. I like my little cheap paints. I like my cheap paints. I, I, I think they, my cheap paints serve me well. My cheap paints serve me well. Susan says she's more relaxed when I make painting papers. Oh my gosh. 
You drag out your unbought. Susan, I love you. You're hilarious. You're more relaxed when I make painting paper. Guys, I love you, Susan. You make me laugh. Um, you pulled out your cameo. What are you? What are you cutting, Lucinda? What are you making with your cameo, girl? You do, girls get to town using your stuff. That's the whole thing. That's what even started this whole thing, you guys. Is you got to start using your stuff. You got a bunch of paints from a yard sale, Jane? Oh, that's awesome. Yes, got to use your painty papers and make embellishments. Make journal pages. It's been in the closet for two years, Cassandra. I understand. I completely understand. So what are you girls giving to yourself for Christmas? I'm talking about to myself. What am I going to give myself? for Christmas this year. Are any of you girls going to jump in and give yourself something for Christmas? Are you going to, are you going to, um, are you going to give yourself anything? Anybody else besides me? Feel like, hey, I deserve a Christmas present. I'm going to give myself something. Anybody else besides moi? Moi, moi, moi. <coughs> I'm definitely going to give myself a cool Christmas present. I haven't decided what it is yet, but I'm going to give it. I am going to give it. Jane says she, she bought paint by the half gallon. Wow. You never need to buy paint again. Well, the problem with paint is it dries out, so you got to start using it, girl. Bought paint by the half gallon. You're going to make some stencils? Oh, good, Cassandra. That's exciting. What is it? I missed it. What's it, Susan? Susan, what did you say? It's um, I missed what you're talking about, Scotty. You'll use it for your secret sister. Awesome. Crocodile punch. Yeah, that's a, that's a great gift. Hi, Dee. Dee says she has to get her own self for Christmas present or never, she'd never get anything. I understand that. I can relate. I can relate. So it's actually good to think about yourself, you know? Anne says she wants a scoring cut. Lucinda says she has cheap paints that came from a garage sale, but it's still fun. Hey, I have mine are 50 cent a bottle paints. They can't get much cheaper than that. That's free, it's cheaper. Um, Jane says she loves packaging that has cutouts to hold things. It does make interesting patterns. Scotty says she always gives herself Christmas and birthday presents. I use my jelly plate I, a lot too, Jane. I haven't used it in the past couple of days. Why? Well, I used it the other day. I love my jelly plate. I have three of them, and I love them all. Aw, you asked Comcast. You asked for Comcast to watch me on the big screen TV. Oh my gosh, Beth, you're hilarious. Thank you for that compliment, Beth. Aw, Scotty says she loves me. I love you, Scotty. That is a good idea, Samantha. Jane says she wants a crafting buddy for Christmas. Okay, did you guys hear that? So who lives near Jane that you can meet up and have a crafting buddy? How far do you live from Portland, Jane? I know Ash lives in Portland. I don't know who else, who else lives close to Jane? Jane, when I come through Portland, I will definitely call you, and I will be your crafting buddy for a day. I would love to come and hang out and craft with you. I would love to come and hang out and craft with you. In fact, when I, I ha may have to travel in, in January, I may try to, like, extend it and... Maybe I'll maybe I'll hit up like New York City and I'll come in and craft with with my ladies in New York. Maybe I'll swing by Portland and come and craft with you. You near live near Swan Island, okay. Susan's telling you how to set ha, has to how to set up your Comcast. So whoever wanted to know how to set up your Comcast. 
Susan's giving you the 411. Susan is totally giving you the 411. You guys, I dream about organizing my crafting supplies. Since I've moved my craft room like so many times, I I'm dreaming about moving my craft. I, I've been dreaming about moving my crafting supplies. Is that ridiculous? I would meet you guys anytime to come and craft. I would love to hang out with you. Scotty, are you inviting us all to come and have a barbecue? Oh, yeah. Come to Canada? I would love that. I would love to come to Canada. Where do you live in Canada, Julian? Lucinda, your son gave you your son gave you twenty dollars to go to to go to um, Michael's. That's awesome. Last year you got a jelly plate. Good. Lisa, you live in Vancouver. I love Vancouver. Vancouver is so beautiful. I've been many times. You, Cassandra wants the original scrap box unit. Girl, you, you, your Santa better, your Santa must be going to be good to you, mama. Your Santa's going to be good to you. Isn't that original scrap box thing like super pricey? Am I wrong? I've seen it. I think it's a really cool idea. I think I have too much stuff and it wouldn't even fit in there. If your daughter wasn't staying in your farmhouse, you, you would invite us all to meet for the weekend to craft, Jane? Okay, Jane. Well, you'll have to let us know. Maybe she'll be like my daughter and like move in and out several times. You know, like decide I'm here and then I'm going to China and then I'm here and then I'm going to go to somewhere else. You know, my kids are like, I can't even begin to tell you my, my stuff, you guys. It's ridiculous, but that's just how it rolls in my life. And I just got to go with it because it'd be my life and I just got to go with it. Okay, I'm liking this one. It needs some more stuff, but it needs to dry. So make painty papers, you guys. If you're going to make them and send them to your crafty bestie or your crafty se secret sister, make the ones you love. Like, add detail to it. Spend time on it. It's your retirement dream. Yeah, it's pricey. Hey, but it's worth it. You have a farm in Ridgefield, Washington? That sounds awesome. You know what? There you. I don't know. Is there still a Tim Holtz cruise? I've. I'm. I have. I have thought about. I'm not. I've never been on a cruise, but I have to tell you, there's only two cruises that I'd like to go on. One would be. Does anybody? Do any of you guys know Esther Hicks? Do, is anybody familiar with Abraham Hicks? So I. I would go on an Abraham Hicks cruise. I thought because I love Esther. And I would go on a Tim Holtz cruise. It's not on his calendar, but yeah. Lucinda says she wants some Prismacolor pencils. Oh, please show us on Facebook. Well, when Susan and Bette move, we're all going to go down and craft at their house. We're all going to go to Texas and craft. Maybe I'll do the Crafting Mamas craft, craft around the country. Maybe I'll just come and craft with one of you guys every week. That would be so fun, you guys. I would love that. That would make me so happy to come and to be like drive around in an RV and craft with people. I think I would love that. Susan says, yes, everyone come because they have plenty of supplies. I love you, Susan. The Popo has lots of supplies, okay? So when we have their, when we have our craft event in Texas, Susan says she's got supplies. She's got some supplies going on. So sounds good to me, Susan. You know me, I'm coming. Yeah, I wish I'd gone too, Liz, but I didn't. Don't you love Abraham Hicks? I do too. Yeah, 
Yeah, we could do a post of what's on your Christmas crafty list. That sounds good to me, Scotty. I'm sure it's still as wonderful as we, we're just attached to Jerry. Samantha says she's got a daughter in Texas. She can do Texas. Or you guys could all splurge and come to Hawaii. You could all splurge and come to Hawaii. I set up a, a couple of years ago for a friend of mine, I set up a retreat, a yoga retreat at this really cool outdoor, they have like, it's like a campground, but it has like cabins and it has places to pitch a tent and it has like, it, it, it's really cool. And I've often thought that it would be a really fun place to have like a, It'd be a really fun place to have to have a, a crafting getaway. Well, I'm gonna hope for you too, Jane. That sounds awesome. My house is pretty small, but you guys could so come. You know what, I, I, maybe I will put it together because I did it for this yoga retreat and I can't remember what it ended up being. We, we found somebody that would cook. It was really quite beautiful. I'll have to take a picture of it and send it to you guys. Um, it's a place on the beach and it has, it sleeps a lot of people. It has like little cabins, it has tent platforms, it has what we call a jungle, which is like a roof. It has beds and everything and it has a roof and it has like screens all the way around it. So it's like in curtains, but it doesn't have walls. And anyway, your brother in law's a flight attendant, Mary Kay. Oh, that sounds exciting. <laughs> Scotty says one of her former students is a manager at Walmart on one of the islands here. In the and she came back to Arkansas for a visit, and the first place she went was a Dollar Tree. Oh, that makes me laugh. Anyway, so it's a really cool place, and we found somebody that cooked, like, they it has a communal kitchen, because the one thing that's super expensive about living in Hawaii is food. I mean, you don't realize it, but everything you get, just about everything is shipped in, so food's expensive. So we had somebody that cooked, and it was really fun, you guys. We had somebody that cooked. Um, we hired somebody to cook for this yoga retreat. Of course, they all eat vegetarian, not that you don't have to be vegetarian, but it was really beautiful to, um, you know, it was like easier for those that wanted to eat meat. They just brought some meat to, you know, just went to the grocery store and got some, but it was really quite nice. The yoga retreat was awesome. And a lot of people got a lot of, a lot from it and it ended up being fairly reasonable, like very inexpensive actually for Hawaii standards. I'm not saying for mainland standards. I can't remember, but they stayed for a week. Can you imagine if you guys came and crafted with me for a week and we were on the beach? Yes, and it's warm here during Christmas. But it would have to be something I'd plan. I have to plan when it way out. Liz saying, Susan, you're on the on the what? Minus 10 corridor, can can you come to Opopo, collector of all things crafty? <laughs> Lucinda said she went to Salina, Kansas and had a crafter's retreat once a year for two days and it was so much fun. We don't have any dollar stores here, but you know what we have here, though, that you guys would love is my, my crazy thrifty bookstore that I go to. You guys would buy everything, I know, because they have everything for really cheap. You can get some cool things. They have everything really cheap. And you can get some cool, cool things. Houston, home of the world champion Astros. That's right. You you would you would you would have sand, your favorite sand in the glue or save sand in your glue. No, they have these big communal rooms. I don't know. I'll take a picture of it and send it to you guys sometime. 
I haven't been in a while. This was a couple of years ago, and they've added more. <coughs> they've added more places to stay, but it was inexpensive. I want to say like for the whole week, <coughs> including the food and <coughs> staying for a whole week. You have to get your own car. I mean, you have to rent a car. But I want to say it was like. $1,000 for the week. I think it was $1,000 for seven days. And that included the places, the place to stay and um, meals, which is cheap for here. If you guys, and it was on the beach. No, it wasn't a five-star resort. Five star, look, let me just tell you this. The cheapest hotels that you can get here start at like $250 a night. Occasionally you can get I don't know about Airbnb because I haven't Airbnb'd here, but it's expensive. So if you figured out what, and food is one of the most expensive things here, but that's what we, I mean, we, that's what we did for this yoga retreat. And it was, it was seven days. It was so awesome. You guys, it was so awesome. Everybody unwound and relaxed and it's right on the beach. So everybody got to hang out on the beach. So can you imagine if we were crafting? <clears throat> so Mary Kay she says she's going to a crafters retreat in February it's $300 for two nights and three days near Mount Rainier and it includes food and a t-shirt that sounds awesome you're going to have a great time I don't know it would be a lot of fun I'll look into it. If you guys are really serious, I'll look into it and I'll see what I can put together. Because I did it for this yoga thing and it was so good. I mean, it was so good. Everybody had such a good time. Everybody had such a good, good time. And um, it was it was a lot of fun. Everyone felt really rewarded and had a really good time. And it was fun. Everyone had a good time. It was super fun. So just make painty papers that you would want to receive. That's the only thing I said. You know, make stuff you want to receive. Make When you spend the time to make it, <clears throat> make it be stuff that you go, I would really like to receive that. Hi, Vic. Yeah, Susan, it would be $300 for a t-shirt. Well, it includes the food in your hotel, too, Susan. So, Hi, Miss Vicky S. Susan is hilarious, right? $300 for her t-shirt. That's what she says. Joyce says, Susan, go in the corner. You guys are so funny. Scotty says, that's a big t-shirt. Oh my God, you guys are hilarious. You guys are so funny. So whatever you make, make some painty papers that you like. Make some painty papers that you would be like, oh, I would love, my secret sister would love that. Or my, you know, make some fun things that you know is going to be made into beautiful things for you. Like I'm liking some of these, but they're a little bright. I might need to do a little toning down. I don't know. Maybe I'll cut them up. I don't know what I'm going to do. You guys are so funny. I love hanging out with you girls. Hilarious. Funny girls. Funny, funny, funny. You guys are ridiculous. You're ridiculous like me. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. It is a big t-shirt. You guys are so ridiculous. The only person we're missing is Miss B.A. Pearl, Miss Vicky Pearl, and we're missing Miss Carla. Usually we have Miss Carla, but you guys, was she live today? Was Carla live today? No, it's Sunday. She's going. I saw her a little bit on Tuesday. Guys, I've been in so much pain. I haven't really done much of anything. It's been sort of like ridiculous how much pain I've been in.
She runs errands on Fridays. You like the bright? I have many pages of bright. What's going on? We're just making stuff for our secret sister. That's what we're making. We're making some stuff for our secret sisters. For our, for our swap. Are you doing the swap, Miss? Are you doing the swap, Miss Vivivic? Are you doing the swap? Are you? I don't remember if you signed up. I haven't really looked, you guys. I figure what I'll do is that <clears throat> after everybody has, like, on the 20th, when, every, when the deadline's done, and I sit down to make the partners on the 21st, or make the, they won't be partners, because you'll get somebody and somebody else will get you. So it wouldn't be much of a secret if you had, a, if you knew, right? Um, I'll look. And you know what? Please, I don't want anyone to feel like if you've signed up that you can't back out, okay? Because stuff happens, and it's not that kind of group. If stuff, if you can't manage it, I do have a couple of ladies who are willing and able and standing by to angel for anybody. Who will carry your bags when you travel, if you travel next week? Oh, my bags? I'm not going to take anything, Jane. I never travel. I traveled, I've traveled lots of different places and I take very little. I have like this little tiny rolly bag. That's it. And I'm not, I may take a journal to write in. Obviously I'm not going to take any sort of art supplies. I'll take, I think I have to take my laptop because I need to do some, some work. But other than that, I don't think I'm going to take anything. I'm just going to wear a coat. I don't have any winter clothes. I have, well, I have, I have one pair of pajamas. I think I have one outfit, maybe two outfits that I can take. And I have one pair of shoes and that's it. You guys, I have no winter clothes. So we're talking like I'll be wearing one outfit and I'll have one outfit. That is it. You guys, when you live here, you don't need clothes like that. You don't need them anymore. It just doesn't work like that. No, I don't, even when I travel for a long period of time, I don't take much of anything. <laughs> oh, next time I'll stop by Jane. Jane, I really wasn't planning it. I don't even know where my flight flies through. And I don't have, a, I think I fly through LA. <clears throat> and I don't have a long layover. Really, I don't own any le leggings and I need a fur lined trench coat. Yeah. Oh, Diana, you're hilarious. Diana says, I'm on her television. Well, thank goodness you guys can't see my hair. You guys, I can't comb my hair. Okay, I went to the acupuncturist, and I was telling her, because my hair, you know, I, I kind of, I cut all my hair off, but I still have hair, okay? Even though I cut it all off myself. I still have some hair going on. Well, <clears throat> I went, when I went to the acupuncturist last week, or whenever the, anyway, she told me that my arm must be getting better because my hair looked better today. You guys, I didn't have the heart to tell her that potty combed my hair. What are you guys talking about? Anne is telling me I need a trench coat. Susan's telling me I need a trench coat. And Anne says I'm a thong. A fog. Not a thong. A thog. Oh, Anne, you're really, you guys are ridiculous. You have a clay date tomorrow night, Cassandra. Oh my God, Anne, I don't even own a thong. That's ridiculous. You know what? There's just some things that I draw the line at. Living in uncomfortable underwear is one of them. Okay? No offense for all you ladies out there that enjoy wearing some dental floss up your behind. It's not me. Oh my Lord. Guys, my mother was a dancer. Okay? Long before thongs were popular, G, we called them G-strings, okay? So when you performed as a dancer, you had to wear that under your costumes. Can you tell you something? That was never my forte. Never my forte. Okay, for all of you that like it, have at it. Not this, not this gal. This gal, pa this gal will pass on that, okay? Uh -huh. And says they're like barbed wire. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, oh my God, you guys, oh my God, whoever listens to this is going to think that we're totally ridiculous, talking about thongs, you guys, how ridiculous is that, 
Okay, so what do I want on my Christmas crafting list? There are some stamps that I want, some background stamps. I mean, I could make my own. I've done it before, but, you know, sometimes it's nice to get yourself something, don't you think? So I found some background stamps, and I definitely want... I want a... There's a couple of background stamps that I've liked. And then I, I think I might like to get myself... You guys are talking. I'm not even going there. You guys are ridiculous. Right, Mary Kay says, you don't have two songs to repeat, Susan. Oh, my God. Jane says she's free of floss. Oh, my God. What kind of songs do they have in Canada? What am I missing? <laughs> oh, Amberly, I love you. <laughs> Amberly says that her body is, what is it? Is it is it luscious? And it tries to make her granny panties look like a thong. Amberly, I love you. <laughs> Jane says, I need a fur thong. Oh, no. We're not even going there. Where's Sean? I know Sean. Sean usually comes around when we're talking about. <laughs> Anne says, not for her. She likes her granny panties. Oh. Arlena, see how ridiculous it gets. Oh, Lord. I know. Where is Sean? Sean, are you around? We know you're going to come because we're talking about thongs. He always comes when we're talking about. <laughs> uh, it says her behind is too, is, is, is way too shapely for anything other than granny panties. Hey, girls, give me my granny panties any day. I love them. <laughs> Arlena says, uh, <laughs> She's lived too long to be pulling undies out of no man's land. <laughs> uh, Samantha said she used to tell her girl, her daughters when they were teenagers, <laughs> that their attitude would be better if they, if they took the dental floss out of their ass. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Sean's radar is probably beeping right now. Oh my God, you guys. Oh, Samantha, that's brilliant. <laughs> you guys, can I tell you, my mother was a dancer. She was amazing. <laughs> Jane says, don't get your panties in a wad. Don't get in a wad. Oh my God. My mother was amazing, but can I tell you guys, thong things, it was like, they were called G-strings back then. It was like, what is the point? You know, seriously, what is the point? I know Joyce says, all cotton for us Southern girls. You got that right. She wasn't a thong dancer. No, Susan, she wasn't a thong dancer. But when you're a ballet dancer, you wear, you either wear no underwear at all and you wear tights, right? Or you wear like a thong, especially if you're, or it wasn't a thong, then a G-string, especially if your costume was sort of see-through or whatever. <laughs> Diana says, the sad part is that she'll be moving in with her daughter and her husband in January, and they have direct TV. Oh, no. Do You can't get it. You can't get, um, they might have a smart TV. If they have a smart TV, it doesn't matter what cable company they have. You can always hook up. No, I hear you. You know what, Amberly? It, but I'm just saying, like, the thought of wearing a thong, like, I have to, whatever. I don't even get into it with my girls. You know, I don't even get into it with my girls. I was, like, so anti-thong. I was like, you guys are ridiculous. Yeah, if if they have a smart TV, you can get YouTube. Smart TV, most TVs now are smart TVs, and you can get anything. I know, you guys. I love you. I needed a laugh. You guys, just the thought of it is brilliant. It's brilliance all at once. It's just perfect. You guys, so ridiculous. The thong song. Remember that stupid song, the thong song? What is up with people? Like, now that tells you about our culture. We sing about our underwear. It's like, oh my God, you guys, can you imagine foreign people that come here? They're like, they sing about their underwear. What is wrong with them? They've really lost their mind. You guys, it's so funny. Liz says her mother asked her to wear a thongs, to buy a thong. 
to wear in a cruise. I said, what? Turns out she meant flip-flops. Yes, definitely, right? <laughs> oh, Liz, I can imagine. What if you'd come back? Okay, this is the most ridiculous thing. Okay, can I just say this? When I was having my daughter, my one that's like 11 now, right? I was in my 40s when I had her. And I went... Um, I went to a maternity store to buy some like maternity clothes and I wanted maternity underwear you know and those are the kinds of the elastic is like different at the top it, it actually is sort of actually really good underwear so I went in to buy them and the lady actually asked me if I wanted a thong I was like are you serious I said can I ask you something like when you're when you're pregnant like what is the purpose of a thong what is the the purpose of a thong. <laughs> Carly says, <coughs> wearing a thong is like trying to start a fire with twigs. Oh, <coughs> brilliant. <coughs> oh my God. Amberly says, yeah, that she can remember most of the lyrics of thong song, but she's forgotten her math skills. Oh my God, Amberly, that's hilarious too. Arlena, you're hilarious. <laughs> Chastity belt. I don't know, you guys. I was like to the lady, I was like, no, I just want regular underwear. And then they were like, she wants regular underwear. I was like, you know what? Don't judge me. Of course, the girls at work there are not, are not old enough to understand. Lucinda said she gave her sister, who's 59, a hard time about wearing a thong. Well, Samantha, I realize that, but what does that have to do with wearing a thong? Is that like a quick slip out? I mean, can, do you know how ridiculous it is? Your belly is so big, and your behind gets bigger, too, when you're pregnant. So what is it? It's like a piece of, it's like a piece of elastic up your butt. I mean, seriously, it's ridiculous. <laughs> oh my gosh you guys I all I can say is that it's made my night laughing about thongs so ridiculous ridiculousness at its finest the thong oh my god guys thongs like who invented that stuff probably some man who'll never wear one right wouldn't you guys agree? Probably a man who will never wear, will never wear one. I think what I would like is a stippling brush. I used to have these great stippling brushes. Have you guys ever stenciled like stuff on walls and you use like a, a, a heart a stippling brush? I think that I might like to get myself. I used to have some. I don't have any anymore. I guess I could just make one by cutting one of my brushes. I could do that. But I don't have a stippling brush anymore. Oh my God, you guys, is Sean really here? Is Sean really here? Sean, are you really here? Is Sean, Sean, are you here? Did I miss every, did he really show up? If you came Sean right now, that's so ridiculous. We're talking about thongs. It's so ridiculous. Lord, you guys are so funny. Susan, you're terrible. I think a man invented heels, too. We should make them wear them. Let's say how well. And, and, do you guys are okay? I just want to pick up. I, 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 I just want to talk about spy movies, okay? Can we just talk about spy movies for a minute? I love spy movies. How many of you guys like spy movies? Is anybody all in on a spy movie like I am? Like, I love spy movies. Okay? In a spy movie, they have a guy. Like, the guy in the spy movie is, like, is, like, you know, bad guys. And he's, you know, with his combat boots and stomping him. Meanwhile, the girl spy is in freaking high heels. And guys are running after her. And she's in high heels. And she's, like... Hey yeah, kicking in high heels and in some mini dress. Okay? I'm like, okay, what is up with this? What is up with this? I 
love spy movies, but that's just total ridiculousness. Like, who in the whole wide world would, you know? Spy movies. Spy movies. Does anybody get it? Spy movies. You guys, spy movies. Spy movies. Spy movies. Spy movies. Spy movies. Spy movies where the women are always wearing high heels. Can I tell you, that just irritates me to no end. I mean, I'd like to see James Bond sport some high heels. Sean's out on a date. I hope he is, you guys. <laughs> you guys are talking about mammograms. Oh, Lord. Hi, Lori. You like the envelopes? Oh, we've made a bunch. We make all kinds of stuff. It's so fun. Come on over and join our Facebook group if you want, if you want to be in on the swap. You guys, all I can say is that it's just ridiculous. Am I the only one that thinks it's ridiculous that spy movies are, that spy movies are, women in high heels are running around in spy movies? I mean, seriously. Got a little paint all over my hands. Does a spy, Mary Kay wants to know, does a spy wear a thong? Well, if she's wearing high heels and a mini dress, yes. And where does exactly, <laughs> Where exactly does she hide her gun? Okay? Okay? Arlena says, or a scary movie where the girl's in the woods in high heels and no bra. I know, right, Arlena? Whatever. I mean, all I can say is my bone to pick with, with spy movies. I love spy movies. But I hate the ridiculousness of the whole, like, it's so stupid. Lori, welcome. We don't always talk about, we talk about everything, okay? We talk about children. We talk about thongs. We talk about spy movies. We talk about, we talk about whatever comes up, whatever you girls bring up. We talk about woo-woo. So if you're not into woo-woo, then I might scare you. So you guys want to hear what, so today when I went to the acupuncturist, speaking of woo-woo, so when I went to the acupuncturist when I was leaving, because I said, I'll make an appointment when I get back. You know, because you guys, I've got to get this whole, I've got to get this rotator cuff thing. Sorry. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> mm. Anyway, <coughs> when I was at the acupuncturist, <coughs> I was talking to her about my shoulder. And, you know, like, and she asked me, she said, do you, do you remember what you did to hurt it? And I said, no, honestly, I don't think I did anything. I said, <coughs> I said, I don't remember <coughs> doing anything. And we were talking about, you know, the significances of different parts of your body. You know, because acupuncture is Chinese medicine, and, you know, she was just showing me my pressure points on my ears, saying that your whole body's represented in your hands, feet, and your ears. And if you can't get in to have acupuncture, what you can do is you can, you know, massage these parts of your, of your ears and different things like that. So she was like talking to me and I said, well, what is this back thing from? I said, because I honestly don't remember. I really don't have a recollection of, 
of doing anything to cause this pain and this and she said most back injuries have to do with reluctance to let go of the past and you guys that like hit me like a ton of bricks and I stood there with my mouth open you know obviously and you know she said that's honestly that's the spiritual aspect of it so tonight if we do our woo woo or when we do our woo woo I am definitely going to let go of whatever it is in me that's holding on to the past I'm not giving away any ancient Chinese secrets. Who's it's a troll? Who's a troll? We talk about everything. I don't know what it. <clears throat> So I'm definitely going to let go of the past. I am, I'm like ready. I'm really ready to let go of whatever it is that's holding me back and whatever it is that I'm like holding on to because like this back thing is like too much. Like it is really too much. It is too, too much. <clears throat> So that's where I am with that. So I'm ready to let it go. And I know from my own work on my own self. I mean, I work on myself every day, you guys. I work on myself every single day. And I never get sick. So this is like super unusual for me, you know? So I have to take a look at it because. If you're a person that doesn't get sick very often and you suddenly get really, really, really sick, it's definitely a sign of some sort of emotional release. So. We do love you, Susan. So I definitely want to let go. Oh my God. You guys are crazy. <clears throat> so I definitely want to let go of that, whatever this is that's holding me back. Now I'm liking this painting paper. Are you guys liking this one? I don't even know if she painted the other side. Susan says, excuse me while you and Joyce have a moment here. You guys are so hilarious. I'm liking this painting paper. I think it'll look great in a journal. You guys are so funny. So I know that like the lung stuff is all grief. I know that you're laughing so hard, Joyce. Oh, I'm glad Susan and you were last week when you told Susan, what did you say? Who said they were from Mars? And then somebody said they were something. And then you said Susan, Susan was from Uranus. That was hilarious. I'm liking this painting paper though. I think this one is a done. Some of them, are, like, I'm liking this, but the black is so stark in it. I think I need to do something to tone down the black. Yeah, the black on this one is, like, because I had too much black on my, on my napkin. I mean, I guess I could just leave it loud and black or whatever. I will make stencils with you guys. I will, but I'm obviously not right, not this week. Uh, maybe in a couple weeks we'll make them. Good night, Anne. If you want to be included in the, um, if you want to be included in the energy work, just say yes to yourself and you'll get it. You'll receive it. Whether, oh, I needed a laugh too. <clears throat> yeah. Big hug to Anne. We love you. And I'm, yes, Anne's from Venus. We love you, Anne. And I'm glad that you're, I'm sorry that you're sanding baseboards and not painting, doing painting papers, but I'm sure you need to sand baseboards for whatever reason. I love you. I love you, ladies. You make my night every week. Hi, Laura. If I didn't say hi to you earlier, it's because I didn't see you. Yeah, good night, Anne. We love you. 
<clears throat> All right, who's up for a little woo-woo before we go? You guys have kept me here, and I'm just grateful. I've I had such a really rotten day, just feeling bad and everything, and this shoulder and my cough and everything. I'm glad to be. I'm glad to be with you. So, <clears throat> Laura's been lurking. Well, hi, Laura. You know I, I've always welcome you. Please, everybody, give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the night and. For those of you that are lurking in the background, everyone is welcome to join our Facebook group. It's called Crafting Mamas, and it doesn't it doesn't matter if you don't paper craft. You can um, whatever crafting you do is is fine. We have all sorts of uh, different types of crafters that have joined, and it's it's really awesome. And I really appreciate all the camaraderie and friendship and kindnesses that you show each other and <clears throat> I love hanging out with you. You guys are my crafty peeps and I'm appreciative. So Oh Liz I do. I work out my I trust me I work every single day. Potty does energy work. He's an energy worker. He does and he's really good. I do. I work on myself every day. <clears throat> Just things come off of you in layers. You know, it's like, uh, I want you to think about it. I mean, not to get too crazy woo-woo with you, but, you know, some of this stuff we've had for lifetimes, and it's not just this one. And some of it we're working out. That's why we have people that come back in our lives again and again and again. And we go, hey, didn't I just experience that with somebody else? And I do. But I'm kind of an all or nothing kind of person. So for me, it's like, I'll tell you guys. And it may take me a few months, but I, when it's all over, I'll tell you what I've been going through. I can't really share it right now. But in a few months when it's all over, I mean, I thought we'd be done by now, but we're not. I'll tell you what it is. And when you know and you really hear what it is, I think you'll have a better understanding of why. And I mean... You know, I do. I work with somebody every day. I work with, I work with him every day. Are you kidding? He works with me every day. But I do. I mean, I have, I have a large community of people that do what I do. And, you know, the thing is this. It's like everything. It's like a doctor cannot diagnose himself or heal himself as quickly as he can help someone else. You know what I mean? So, even though I know this is what I, there's just layers of letting go that has to happen. What happened? What happened, Laura? What did I miss? You're really late. Well, it's okay, Laura. You can be here anytime you want. You're never late. You know what? I always think it's perfect timing no matter what. So, <clears throat> you'll craft along tomorrow. Night, Laura. Big hugs for you. So yeah, and it's layers, you know, it's never just one thing. Like we think that things come up for us and it's just one thing, but it's never, it's never just one thing. And I guess, you know, I know there is such things as spontaneous healings I've experienced on myself. Like one time I broke my tailbone. Oh, that's a whole story. So one time I broke my tailbone, I was, I used to do a, a radio program in San Francisco and then I was there working, or I was flying back and forth from the East Coast to the West Coast. And sometimes you could do it over the phone, but sometimes if you had big in-studio guests, you had to be there. And I lived in New York, and I used to fly to San Francisco when I got out of the cab or where the place where I stay, and I slipped and I broke my tailbone. And you guys, it was it was pouring rain, and the shoes I had on, it was just everything. And I fell and I slipped, and... Then I had to sit through like six or eight days with people and fly and I don't remember, do all this stuff. So the first few days I was there, I mean, I just had to pretend it didn't happen and it was bad. I mean, my whole back was bruised and, you know, I just kept working on myself, just going inside and saying, like, what is it in me, whatever it is in me that I needed to experience this, I want to make amends. I love you, I'm sorry. I love you, I'm sorry, I love you, I'm sorry. I kept working on myself, and then 
I had to fly somewhere, I can't even remember where, and I just knew that I wouldn't be able to travel because it was so, if you've ever broken your tailbone, it's like ridiculous. It is definitely the most ridiculous. Anyway, so I got on, uh, I got on the plane and I made the intention to myself to have a spontaneous healing. Because I knew I had to fly. I don't remember where I was flying to at that point. But I knew I was flying somewhere else and then flying to India and flying. I was flying all over and I knew that I wouldn't be able to sit the extent that you needed to with a broken tailbone and or like hike and do all the things required for this upcoming trip. And so I found some music that I really like just sort of like sounds like waterfalls, you know, like ambient noise. And I put myself into the deepest meditation that I could and, and to stay awake. Like almost like a self-hypnosis, you know, where you're completely aware, but you're in really deep. And in that deep state, uh, sent absolute love and light and forgiveness to my tailbone. Now, realize I had had my tailbone x-rayed and they had, had broken it in two or two, chipped off a piece and broke it in another place. So anyway... To make a very long story short, the next day I was so tired. I slept the whole day. I got to wherever I was going and I slept the whole day. And when I woke up, I had the bruise. The bruise was from my tailbone all the way up to my mid-back. But there was no pain. And I thought, oh, this is awesome. There's no pain anywhere in my body. And um, I thought, this is remarkable. You know, because I had been in pain for so many days and I'd gone and had my... I was afraid that I had cracked more than my tailbone, so I had gone and had x-rays. So when I got back to San Francisco, like maybe a week and a half later, I went back to the doctor, had a follow-up doctor's appointment, and they took another x-ray and they couldn't see anywhere where my tailbone had been broken. So it works, you know? So it works, it works. Hey, Elizabeth. You made it to in time for our energy work. So for the so you're right, Liz. Yes, I do work on myself. Yes, I do have other people work with me. Yes, I do do um, um, believe in spontaneous healing. Have I been able to muster that in this particular situation with my arm? No, I haven't. And have I been able to muster that same sort of energy in... I think I've released the stuff in my chest fairly well, so I think it's pretty, it's much better. Um, but yes, I know it can be done spontaneously, and you know, just got to get clear enough to let it go and not be stuck with it. So I mean, but it's not anything new. I mean, I've people, people all the time have all sorts of spontaneous healings and stuff like that. Self, self-induced spontaneous healings. Meaning you don't have to go to anyone else to have it. You just do it yourself. Anyway, so let's do a little bit of energy work and then I'll give you guys a hug good night because I know it's late for many of you. So for those that want to be included with the, in the energy work, just say yes. And for those that don't, you can say no and you won't receive it. Although somebody said last week that she didn't say yes or she wasn't so tuned in, but she felt much more peaceful. So we're all connected, you guys. So when you're doing well, I'm doing well, vice versa. Okay, so it's not um, it's not exclusive to me. It's it, it's if you don't want to receive the energy work you want, but you may re receive the side effects of just feeling peaceful because you're connected to all of us and we're all in a different state of peace. Does that make sense? You know, it's like going into a, a classroom where everybody's screaming and yelling and you get all riled up, or going into one where everybody's really zen and you pick up on that zen. So, so for those that want to be included, just say yes to yourself, and those that don't, just say no, and no one is obligated. And for those that are coming in the future, this energy work stays here all the time, and anyone can receive it, and you can send it to anyone. Doesn't mean if they have, their higher self has to want to receive it though. So that's just kind of how it works. So all I have to do to participate is to sit or wherever you are comfortably or lay down and I like you don't have to close your eyes but I like to close my eyes when I do it just makes me concentrate more but you can keep your eyes open or closed it works no matter what I just think it helps you to get a little bit more quiet when you close your eyes
So, and all you have to do is inhale through your nose and exhale out through your mouth. That's your only job. And just give yourself the suggestion that you want to let go. Oh, Samantha, you're so awesome. Oh, I love you, girls. Thank you so much. You have no idea. So image yourself in a column of light. This is your column of light. See it as bright, vibrant, beautiful, glowing white light. It extends around your body six feet in all directions. This column of light is endless. When you look up, you can't see the top, and when you look down, you can't see the bottom. This is your column of light, your spark of creation. Allow your column to go deep, 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 very deep into the earth. And when you've gone, is let it go as deep as it can easily, effortlessly, and imaginably go. Allow it to grow big, deep tree roots. Allow these tree roots to find their way deep into the core of Mother Earth and spread out as far as you can easily and effortlessly and enjoyably imagine. Let's give our beloved Mother Earth our love and ask her to return the same, sending us her love and energy. I like to see this energy like gold light, that you can see, feel, think, or just know this energy in any way that works best for you. Inhale and receive this beautiful gold light through your tree roots through the crest, through the mantle of the earth, rising up through the floor where you're sitting, entering your feet and spreading through your column of light and your ankles and spreading your calves and spreading and your knees and spreading and your hips and thighs and spreading Feel it pooling in the base of your spine, this beautiful gold earth energy. Breathe it in. Feel it rising up in your lower abdomen and spreading. And your navel and spreading. Feel it rising up to your heart and spreading. Feel it feeling your chest and your back. Beautiful gold earth energy. Feel it rising up. Feeling every vertebra of your spine. Feel it going down your shoulders, your upper arms, elbows, lower arms, wrists, and out every finger. Feel it rising up through your throat. Feel it filling your face and feel this beautiful gold earth energy fountaining out the top of your head. Breathe it in. Breathe it in. And breathe it in.
So let's give thanks for our connection to the earth. I want you to give your body personality permission to receive the highest vibration of cosmic, heavenly, angelic energy that you can easily, effortlessly, and enjoyably imagine. I envision this like silvery diamond light that you can see, feel, think, or know this energy any way that works for you. Feel this energy pouring in from above you, through the top of your head, into your column of light, and mixing with your earth energy and spreading six feet in all directions. Breathe it in. Feel it filling your face and spreading. Your neck and spreading. Throat and spreading. Shoulders and spreading. Upper arms, elbows, lower arms, wrists, and out every finger. Breathe it in. Breathe it in. Feel it filling your chest and spreading and your heart. Feel it filling your stomach, your navel center. Feel it at the top of your spine and running all the way down your spine. Feel it filling your lower abdomen. Feel it filling the base of your spine. And Feel it pouring down your legs, your hips, thighs, knees, calves, ankles, and out the bottom of your feet. Ready? Breathe it in. Breathe it in. And breathe. I want you to focus on your heart. And I want you to give your heart a window or a door, whatever works for you, and open it up. And I want you, on the inhale, to breathe in whatever it is you'd like to receive in your life at this moment. Maybe it's just more financial support, more friendship, more love, more confidence, more compassion for yourself. Maybe it's better health. Whatever it is that you need in this moment, I want you to breathe and receive that in this window. And on the exhale, I want you to let go of anything that doesn't serve you, and you don't even need to know what it is. All you need to do is give your body personality permission to release anything that's not working for you. Ready? Receive what you need in love. Ready? Receive in love. And let go of anything else. Receive in love and release anything else. Receive in love and release anything else. Receive what you need and release anything that doesn't work. Receive what you need and let go of anything that doesn't work. And one more time, receive what you need and let go of anything that doesn't work.
Now on this inhale, I want you to receive what you need. And on the exhale, I want you to send exactly what you're asking for and more out to everyone in this group and anyone that you think could use some extra help at this given moment in their life. Ready? Receive what you need and send it out to everyone. Receive in love and give in love. Receive in love and give in love. And one more time, receive what you need and send out to everyone else. Now, I want you guys to put someone special in your life in the circle. It could also be a place. It could be your home, your business, your friends, your family, your pets. It could be a place you love, Puerto Rico, Texas, Florida, the Virgin Islands, Mexico, wherever all of these natural disasters have happened. Receive in love, and then on the exhale, send it out across to all of these places. Ready? Receive in love, and send out to everywhere else. Receive in love and send out in love. Receive in love and send it out. And one more time. Receive in love and send it out. I'm gonna do something a little different tonight. I want you guys, <coughs> as I call on the areas of your body I want you to put your attention there, okay? And I'm going to send a special boost to that area. Let's focus on the base of your spine. That's your first energy center, okay? I want you to breathe in, and I just want you to focus there. <clears throat> Receive in love and give in love. Receive in love and give in love. One more time. Receive in love and give in love. One last time. Receive in love and give in love. your attention to your second energy center at your lower abdomen. Ready? Receive in love and give in love. Receive in love and give in love. Once again, Receive in love and give in love. One more time. Receive in love and give in love. For 
focus on your navel center. This is your third energy center. Ready? Receive in love and give in love. Receive in love and give in love. And one more time. Receive in love and give in love. One last time. Receive in love and give in love. Focus on your heart. Receive in love and give in love. Receive in love and give in love. One more time. Receive in love and give in love. And one last time. Receive in love. And give in love. Focus on your throat. Receive in love. And give in love. Receive in love. And give in love. Receive in love and give in love. Receive in love and give in love. One last time. Receive in love and give in love. way to focus on <clears throat> your forehead and the center of your forehead. This is your sixth energy center. Ready? Receive in love and give in love. Receive in love and give in love. One more time, receive in love and give in love. One more time, receive in love and give in love. Focus on the top of your head. This is your seventh energy center. Receive in love. Then give in love. Receive in love. And give in love. Receive in love and give in love. One more time. Receive in love and give in love. Focus six feet above your head. I want you to receive in love and feel this energy pouring all the way through your body and out your hands and feet. Ready? 
Receive in love, six feet above your head. Ready, focus there. Receive in love. And give in love, feel the energy pouring all the way through your body and not your hands and feet. Receive in love. Receive in love. And receive in love. And one more time, receive in love. One more time, receive in love. We need to image a big figure eight. It starts six feet above your head. It crosses in your heart. It enters deep into the earth. And it crosses back through your heart. And ends right back where it started. Okay? All I want you to do is on the inhale, <coughs> receive the love of the divine. And on the exhale, Give back the love to the divine. Ready? On the inhale, feel it six feet above your head. Ready? Receive in love. Feel it crossing your heart. Feel it entering deep, deep, deep in the earth. Feel your figure eight coming back and give in love. Receive in love. Feel it crossing your heart, feel it entering deep into the earth, and give in love. Receive in love. And give in love. And one last time. Receive in love. And give in love. This is what it feels like for you to be filled up with you, with all of your divine light, with your connection to your higher self, to source, divinity, whatever you want to call it. This is what it feels like to, for you to be filled up with you in complete connection. For those of you that say I'm not feeling anything, it's okay. Just know that it happens no matter what. And when you feel ready, allow yourself to come back and be present. This energy stays with you. It doesn't go anywhere. Because it's you. It's you filled up with you. And if any of you want to share what you're feeling or seeing or thinking or knowing, please feel free to share in the chat what you're feeling. It's okay if you don't want to share anything. 
for those of you that will listen to this at a, at a later time, please do not do this while you're driving. Please take time to just hang and be. Don't do it when you're driving. Don't do it when you're operating any sort of equipment of any kind. Samantha, thank you so much. I could really feel your love and I really appreciate it. I really I felt something different tonight and I just wanted to say thank you. You know, it really, it means a lot to me. Thanks, Diana. I will have a safe trip. Thank you. How do you feel? Oh, good night, Joyce. Big hugs to you guys. Good night, good night. Love, love, love. If you want to share how you feel, I always appreciate hearing what you're feeling. Diane says she feels good. Oh, good. Amberly says she has a headache. Okay, so if you get a headache, Amberly, open the, your cords at the bottom of your feet, okay? Make your grounding cords bigger. Make your tree, tree roots bigger. I'll miss you too, Samantha. And, um, oh, good, I'm glad. Amberly, make your tree roots bigger. So if anybody gets a headache, just make yourself grounded more into the earth, okay? So make your tree roots bigger. Make sure the cords that are coming from your feet are bigger and maybe add two more from the base of your spine. You know, make your circle bigger. You're vibrating with fullness. Oh, Beth, that's awesome. I love you, Beth. I will miss you guys. You have no idea how much I'll miss you. You guys have been here for, with me through some really trying times, and I'm so grateful. You have no idea how grateful I am. I am so, so grateful. The girls have been with me through some really, you know, it's really funny how life brings you what you need, even when you don't know. Oh, Edna, thanks for staying. I thought you'd already gone. Is everything good with your family, Edna? Sending them so much love. Sending your family so, so much love. Yeah, you guys, everybody have a nice and safe weekend. Anybody else want to share? It's not mandatory to share. Oh, Joyce, don't feel anxiety for me. I'll be good. Hi, Kayla. Mahalo, Milo, to you. Joyce, don't even take on my crud. It's not worth it, you know? I've been releasing it and releasing it and releasing it. It'll be fine. I will be fine. I know I will. No matter what. Thank you, Joyce, for your love. I really appreciate your love and concern for me. I really do. I love you, girls. You know, if you guys want to help each other out, and me included, hold each other in the highest light. Hold each other in the most perfect light. Hold each other seeing everything being perfect and in divine order. Because, you know, then it helps. Good night, Samantha. Yeah, I'll see you soon, Kayla. I will see you soon. Gonna have to make a trip to Arkansas to see all you ladies. You girls are all out there having a good time in Arkansas. Yeah, thanks so much. I'm gonna need it. I'm like, 
I have to get. I have to go buy some long underwear. I think I don't even know if I can buy any here. Isn't that hilarious? Hilarious. The thought of going to try and find long underwear in Hawaii. Susan says she's very relaxed. Oh, that's so good. I'm so glad. Good. How's our Maddie Jane? Is she good? I love the picture. She's so cute. She is just. She's such a sweetie. She looks, her eyes are so bright and wide open. It's awesome. You feel very relaxed, Arlena? Awesome. I'm glad. I'm so glad. She's beautiful. She is. She, her eyes are so bright. She's so aware. Anybody else want to share anything before we go? And Pat, we sent it to you too. You received it. I was sending it to you, sending it to Sarita, and then all those other ladies that join us sometimes that have some, have some issues. She's a good baby. Oh, I bet she is. She looks so cute. That was such a cute picture. She looks so beautiful. Pat says she loves you, Pat. I'm sending it to you too, Fee. I was sending you all my love, Fiona. Because I love you and we're sending you some good vibes. If you guys, please, if you come back and listen to this, don't do it while you're driving. Don't do it while you're driving and don't be like multitasking. Just sit down and be with it. You know, it's, it, it's, first of all, it's much more effective that way. But second of all, you know, sometimes it takes you into a mindless state where you can, you know, not be completely there. And I don't want you to get hurt. Like, don't climb on a ladder. Don't operate heavy equipment. Just hang out for the 20 minutes that we did it. But saying, I love you, Pat. And she's saying, I love you too, Fiona. She's saying, I love you, Fiona. Pat, we love you. And we appreciate your love and support. And we feel it. We so feel your love and support when you're here. And so if you guys haven't signed up for our secret sister, our secret Santa swap, you can go on over to Crafting Mamas and sign up. You, ha you have until um, November 20th to sign up. And the guidelines are in the description. I will also do a, a short video. I don't know if I'll get to do it before I leave, but I'll try to, that just talks about it. And I'll show a completed sister, uh, completed secret Santa pack, the one I'm going to send. So you can see it and so you know what it entails. So you guys are always welcome to join that. If you guys want to join my free monthly energy work, there is also a link or I'll make sure there's a link in the description box. Everyone's invited. It's a little like what we did today, but just more in depth and just energy work. And it's, it's very powerful and it, you know, connects you with you on an even deeper level. And it's, it's, it's wonderful for me. And I have had great responses for those, for those that I work with. You're all welcome. And please, as always, join our, our Facebook group, Crafting Mamas. You are all welcome. You are so welcome. Everyone's welcome. Oh, ladies, I can't tell you how much you've uplifted me. I will never, I will laugh until, I, I mean, laughing at all the things that you guys say. And I, 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 you have no idea what you mean to me. I, I love you more than you know. And I'm just grateful. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And as always, always, always. From my heart to your heart, I'm sending you so, so, so very much aloha. Aloha till I see you again and um, know that I love you so much. I love you, Amberly. I love you, girls. You have no idea. I hope that when you're here with me doing my ridiculousness that you feel how much I love you because I genuinely do. Your family's doing good. Oh, Edna, that's such good news. That is such, such, such good news. Such good news. 
All right, ladies, I love you so much. And, you know, once again, join our Facebook group, Crafting Mamas. And um, I'll see you guys next time. I, I don't know if I'll be on at all next week, but if not, I'll be on the following Tuesday. The week of Thanksgiving, I'll be on that Tuesday, whatever that Tuesday is. Okay, ladies. Aloha.